long as I possibly can. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe once I start getting into the map editor and stuff, I'll wake up a little bit. I don't know. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right in. So, uh, oh, first, just by like announcement, um, the second quotes video. phone. The second quotes video uh, for the Horde uh, characters is now available to watch uh, if you're a member or a patron. So if you'd like uh, to see that early, you can become a member. Uh, even if it's just for this month or whatever, you'll be able to get early access to that video right now. Um, you'll also get to participate in another stream probably next week, which is called Able Talk, where it's just kind of a more personal stream with me. So if you're interested in that, feel free to do that. Otherwise, the video will be available for everybody on Saturday night or Sunday morning. All right, so we got our map here. Um, this is our great map that we've made. Uh, I did make a few just like quick changes to it after we finished last time, just because we didn't quite finish everything. I just kind of decorated the islands over here, just kind of typical island doodads and stuff. Uh, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I made this cave area. Um, so yeah, it just kind of goes uh, like through a ramp down to the bottom here and then I just used barriers to kind of close it off so that it makes it feel more underground, I guess. So yeah, there's that. Just kind of you know, sprinkled some doodads in there and then I added just a couple of random like wilderness encounter areas. Uh, there's uh, this quarry, which maybe I'll make like some ore generate there. Uh, there's these like bird peaks or something. I don't know. I just thought this looked kind of cool. There's lots of birds over here. Um, and then I added just a couple of things to the swamp, like flies and thorny bushes and stuff. Um, just kind of sprinkled some rocks throughout the map. I made this little forest here. I uh, didn't really change that apparently. And I made a little lake. And then I think that's it. A little shipwreck right there. So yeah, I just kind of rounded it out so it'll be easier today. All right, so today we're going to talk about units. Um, I called the streams. Uh, I called this stream units right now, but if we get to like spells and items, I might change it. Uh, we'll just see how far we get, but at the very least, we're going to be covering units. So first of all, well, first of all, it's just kind of, uh, as we wait for more people to get here, I'm just going to start putting some critters in the map. When you're making uh, units on the map, remember that uh, you have to be on neutral passive to do certain things like gold mines and stuff. Oh, I could put a gold mine down there. That'd be kind of fun. Or not. That's weird. I wonder why I can't. Maybe it has to have like some... Oh, it has to have some clearance and stuff. Um, I don't care that much. Never mind. Um... Anyway, yeah, gold mines and stuff like that have to be neutral passive. Um, so let's just kind of fill these out. Um, all right, so the town, we already put some dogs and rats. Let's just kind of put critters that fit. So on the island, obviously that would be sunken ruins. So for here, let's do some seagulls. Uh, crabs, kind of near the shore be kind of fun at some point to uh... oh uh, sports pro it is my I don't know I, I do a stream for members every month but this is my second uh, and I've done like a D&D &D stream I can't remember what the other one was but yeah this is I've done a few streams uh, hopefully I've gotten like the video and audio down <laughs> there's always been problems but hopefully it's good this time Hermit crabs, skinks. All right, that works well for that one. For the forest, obviously we got stags. 
I don't like how the stags are purple. I guess I don't mind too much because, uh, like, it's kind of night elf y to have, like, them be purple. I don't know why. But sometimes I change their color to brown. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's do that in our first jump into the unit editor. So the first thing that I messed around with when I learned how to use the unit editor was uh, just tint color. It's been actually kind of funny. Um, so if you want to change the tinting color of something, that's one of the ways that Blizzard makes their creeps different. Um, they just have the same skin and everything, but like they're slightly bigger and slightly redder or whatever. And that's like, oh, that's a bandit enforcer instead of a bandit footpad or whatever. I don't know what they're called anymore. But you can do that with certain things. So let's just do that for the stag. So it's so two, 255, 255, 255. Each number of these red, green, and blue values goes from 0 to 255. So 255 all the way is white, meaning it's just normal. It's not tinted any other color. And then all zeros. Oh, thanks to Snugglebottom for checking in on that. I'm, I'm glad it sounds good and stuff. I think I finally figured out like the position of my microphone, stuff like that. So hopefully it'll stay that way throughout the stream. Anyway, all zeros is black, all 255s is white, zero on blue, and 255 on the other two is yellow. It's basically the colors of light. It's not the primary colors. So anyway, hopefully this isn't too crazy, but I don't know. You guys are gamers so if, if you're like this far and wanting to change stuff on uh warcraft 3 you probably already know this but anyway so we want it to be a little more brown so we take out some of the blue color in it Ooh, that already looks better and let's take out a little more and now it's starting to turn yellow so let's put a little bit more in that and leave most of the green there hey look at that it's still a little too blue though, so let's try just a little less. Hey, look at that, we got a little Bambi there. I like that better, that looks pretty good. So now we got some brown stags in here. Okay, so we got those. Um, let's do, uh, I was gonna do a farmstead. You know what, let's do, let's do like a little farmstead here at some point. So I'm gonna do like some bunny rabbits and the in the flowers. Oh, there's my autosave. Thank you, autosave. Uh, some chickens are going to be around here. Let's put some raccoons in the forest. And, like, raccoons, like, root through, like, trash, right? So we made this, like, slums area here. So let's put some raccoons in the trash. Because <laughs> that's funny. I remember that these raccoons were originally for a single scenario map that came with the Frozen Throne. It was called Funny Bunny's Egg Hunt. <laughs> Maybe I should play that sometime. Uh, but yeah, same with the chicken. But then they put them into the actual game. So yeah, those were all like Easter animals. It was funny. Um, all right, barons. Yeah, we could put some barons things up here. Oh, just pigs pretty much. Oh, that's weird. Why is it just pigs? There should be vultures too. Pigs. Um. Oh, it's. I think it's in like Fellwood. Yeah. Why are vultures in Fellwood? I mean, sure, there's probably vultures in swamps as well, but why not the barrens? It doesn't make sense. Okay. Sure. Yeah. We'll put some vultures throughout the swamp. Uh, frogs in the swamp. Yeah. Frog models are really, really like simple. <laughs> it looks like it's made of cookie dough. That's pretty hilarious. Their eyes are like little boxes. Yeah, you can tell that they kind of just threw that model together. Uh, there's a lot of, like, lily pads here, so I'm just going to make, like, a whole bunch of frogs right here. When you arrive at the swamp, who knows how far they'll have spread out, but that'd be kind of funny if they're, like, blocking your path and you have to, like, kill them and stuff. Anything else in the cityscape? We already got, like, uh, dogs and stuff. Let's do some sheep. They'll go out here on these, like, plains. Um, Dalaran's not going to have anything else, it's just like a cityscape. Dungeon, rats, skeleton, that's weird. 
But I am fine with putting some rats in our underground mountain thing. I feel like there should be a spider critter. You know what, let's make one. So when you create a new unit, you click this button here, and every unit has to be based on one. So I'm gonna base mine on the rat because it's gonna be in the dungeon tile set and it's just, you know, a critter. So we'll name this Spiderling. I uh, still don't know. This is brand new, like having an object ID and stuff. I don't really know what the point of that is. Hopefully I'm not going to mess anything up by not worrying about it. Alright, so now we have our new Spiderling unit. It's down the custom units. You can find custom units in custom. Melee is what can be played on like an official map. C campaign is anything that's on one of the campaigns, like special units like Arthas and Jaina and stuff like that, and then custom is your own. Uh, however, you will, I think, find... Oh, maybe you don't find them in there. Okay, yeah, so custom. All right, so here's a spiderling. So what we're gonna do, is let's change the interface. Even though the interface isn't that important for a... Okay, this is kind of cool. They didn't used to have a search bar here. Is that what this is? Yeah, sweet, okay, I like that. So, um, that's really nice. Usually you have to like scroll through all of them, obviously, but um, in fact, it's got all the spiders, look at that. So we can make it look however we want. Oh, spider crab, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I like that red one. Um, so yeah, we just pick a interface icon, which is what you see when you click to like hire it or when it's in your army down at the bottom. Like I said, it's not that important for critters because you're not going to see that because you're probably not going to be controlling the critters, but it can happen. Like if you kill a bunch of critters and other enemies and then you cast animate dead, you might have like an undead spider on your team, which is pretty funny. Uh, oh, and you can also see the interface icons on your meat wagons. Like it, it shows you what types of corpses you have in there for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't just say corpse, but it's kind of funny. Um, David Freed did all the tool tips in the game, and I think he just did this as a joke for all the critters. He just said, you know, like the tool tip is like, it explains what the unit does. It's like, heavy melee unit has these abilities, da 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 da. But it was funny because all the critters he put, call upon the spirit of rat or sheep to save you, which is kind of funny. Normally you wouldn't see that, and it's just a joke, but like I said, if you have a meat wagon and you pick up like a dead critter corpse, you can mouse over it and see that, so that's kind of funny. Maybe I should have put that in one of my easter egg videos, actually. Oh, we'll just change that for consistency. Alright, hello everyone. Um, looks like we're getting some more people in here, although for some reason it still says there's only three. Um, okay. Is this an online RPG? I assume that's what you mean by ORPG. Um, I'm not gonna cover multiplayer maps this time. Maybe I will in the future. That could be kind of a fun future stream to like make this a straight up multiplayer game. It's an interesting point. But it, it involves some special considerations. So for now we're just keeping it simple. You know, just doing kind of a normal single player RPG. Uh, okay, so we got the interface icon. Like I said, not that important, but we, what is important is the model. So, model file. So the model file is what you see on the game. So, man, this, this search thing is going to be awesome. So yeah, it's a black spider. It's not going to be as big as a real black spider, though. So let's just put it on the map. In fact, let's see how it compares to, like, a raccoon. Ah, oh, why is that still laggy? It's kind of annoying. Why is that lagging? Dang it. Okay, well, anyway, obviously too big. So what we're gonna do is make it smaller. So when you want to make something smaller, you go to scaling value. 1.0, just think of it as like a hundred percent. So if you wanted to make it bigger, you could do 2.0 for 200 percent. Where I'm gonna do like 0.6 or something. That's still pretty big for a spider. We'll do point. Okay, yeah, look at that. Cute little spiderling. Man, that lag's gonna get annoying. 
Oh well. All right, so let's go ahead and put just kind of sprinkle some of these spiderlings in our dungeon now. All right, cool. Yeah, so we just created our first unit together. Um, all right, so those are our critters. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. I was just kind of. Oh, okay. Let's do some in the. Um, Let's do some in the snow area. All right, yeah, we gotta have some like penguins in here and stuff. So there's some penguins on this sort of icier side, and then we'll just do some. Even though this doesn't make any sense because seals would be near water, but we'll just do some kind of seals out here and some snowy owls. Why not? The only thing I don't like about the see now why isn't it lagging now? That's weird. Does it only lag when I do? Yeah, look at that bad frame rate. That's really weird. Okay, oh well. Anyway, uh, the only thing I don't like about these snowy owls is they have a terrible death animation. See, watch this. See, they just start flapping rapidly and then disappear. Actually, there's a... I think I did this last time, but in the very lower right-hand corner of the map editor, there's a little green icon of a gem, and if you click on that, it turns purple, and then it's just kind of a little secret thing. Basically, now whenever you delete stuff, uh, it does its death animation. Yeah, see, so that's pretty terrible. I'll just leave that on for the fun of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm excited about uh, Reforged as well. I, I'm surprised there hasn't been any more news yet, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out, see if there's... I don't know. Eventually, they're, they're going to have to release something eventually. I just, I'm just i just kind of worried that it's not going to come out this year like they expected, but I guess we'll find out. All right, so... Uh, oh, let's let's do some... Just real quick, some neutral buildings. Um, like I said, I don't think that these can be selected if you have any of your players selected. Even if you're in like the neutral thing, yeah, you can't. So remember to do that. Oh, that's weird. Apparently the forgotten one is a melee unit. That's definitely a mistake. That must have accidentally been put as a melee unit instead of a campaign unit. Surprised that there's Nerubian ziggurats too. Hmm. Anyway, uh, what was I doing? Yeah, so passive. So I know that I want to make a few specific passive buildings. Um, let's do, let's have a fountain of, you know what? I'm gonna make this fountain be a fountain of health. So if you ever need healing, you can just come back to town. Instead, let's put like a, let's put like a fountain of mana in the uh, forest. That's pretty sweet. And another one. The swamp would be kind of a cool place to have one, huh? Like a, a place you wouldn't expect. Ooh. Here's an idea. Uh, so if you guys remember the um, campaign, there's a level where there's like a tainted fountain. Um, it's either, I think it's, hmm, I can't remember which one it is actually, but uh, I know it's on the like extended orc campaign where they go to the Dark Spear Isles, but anyway, uh, anyway, there's like a tainted one. So let's do this other fountain of mana. Oops, I meant to name it something different. Fountain of tainted mana. No, not tainted fountain of mana. This is new too, this area here. I'm, I, We'll, we'll experiment with that later because that could be useful as well because normally there's like you have to do these stupid codes and memorize them to change the color of the text and stuff like that um all right so tainted fountain mana so for this let's make it's gonna be functionally exactly the same however let's change the model to be a that's what's called defiled. So it's a defiled fountain, but otherwise it's the exact same. So let's do custom. 
There we go. So yeah, in the swamp, just for no reason, over here by these like vents and stuff of swamp gas, there's a tainted fountain of mana. That looks pretty cool. I actually really like the look of that. And last I checked, the healing animation, like the little like, you know, like the little yellow um, healing animation when you're close to a healing fountain. I don't think you can change that. That's one of the weird things that's hard coded in the game. But if it wasn't, it'd be cool to use the tranquility effect because it's green as well. But anyway, that's good for now. So that looks pretty cool. Um, any other neutral buildings you want to make? Um, I do want to. Oh yeah, we'll do a shipyard. Sure. That looks really bad, by the way. You never want to make a shoreline that looks like that. That's pretty bad. A custom fountain where it has both health and mana regeneration, but make it guarded by super strong enemies. Hmm. That's pretty good. And in fact, I think that the middle, um, the one in town could be like that, because I want that to be an area where you just, you don't have to worry about combat and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, anyway, there's the shipyard, and then I'm also going to do, oh yeah, we put the way gates last week, so we can check and test those at some point. I also wanted to do like an inn, like a tavern, and a marketplace, and a merchant, and a mercenary camp in town. I don't know if I want to do that now, or make my own units. Hmm. Let's just do it now, and then I can like modify the the uh, things later. Okay, so let's just make room for this. Okay, so we got the slums, the religious district, the magic district, and the middle class district. So let's see, I'm guessing that the slums would probably be the mercenary camp. You could go there to hire like bandits or something. That could be fun. So we got that there. I think you can... Hmm, that's weird. I think you can... Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, I forgot about this. This is cool. So there's a built-in way in the unit editor where you can change the team color. Normally, obviously, like your uh, your unit is the, the same color as your team. Like if you're red, all your units are red, but you can override that. And I forgot that... <laughs> it looks funny without the explosion, it just sinks into the ground. Um, I forgot that it's kind of cool, depending on the map, these... Uh, uh, mercenary camps have different colors. So let's just look at them. So Ashenvale, dark green, makes sense. Barrens is, oh, is there no, oh, there it is. Yeah, brown, that's what I thought as well. Black Citadel, I wonder if it's like black? Oh, uh, oh it's purple, cool. Anyway, so you can override that, which is kind of cool. The one here, uh, the, the slums are blue. So I'm just gonna take a guess and and say that Northrend's gonna be blue. Nope, purple. Uh, you know what? We actually I forgot that each uh, mercenary camp has different mercenaries, so I definitely want one based on the village. So let's just start that for now, and I'll just change the color. Orange, interesting. All right, so let's do the mercenary camp for the village. Okay, yeah, so the team color is orange. Let's change it to blue. There, now it fits those sort of, except it's kind of a bright blue. I wonder if the new blue colors would look better. Let's try turquoise. No, that looks awful. Uh, light blue? Nah. Let's just do blue. How do I delete things like that? Uh, if you weren't here a minute ago, there's a thing in the corner called Gem. It's just a little green icon that turns purple when you click it, and uh, it um, makes it do that. Do that. It also makes it so when you like click on units, they sometimes use their voices. Yeah, that dog isn't making noise, but anyway, it's just kind of a little Easter egg. Oh, wait a minute! I just realized something. Navy. That might look better. That's close enough. Okay, we'll go with Navy. All right, so there's the mercenary camp. You can like, you know, hi hire shady work in the 
in that district of town. Um, we'll say that this part right here is the, okay, that's like the tavern or something. So let's just get rid of some of these here and make room for an actual tavern. And a tavern's already red. That's actually perfect. I actually want to see if there's Just kind of fill in these areas right here. Good enough. Okay, so that's the tavern. And then for the religious district, I'm not sure how far we can go with like keeping these things themed, but am I gonna add individual gatekeepers to each of the gates? That could be pretty fun. Um, yes, via Jana Super Loon, I will do quests. Uh, that'll be in my next stream, which will be about triggers. So, yeah, don't worry about that. I'll definitely go over quests and how to complete them, all that good stuff. Um, all right, so anyway, in the religious one, let's do like a... Let's just do like a merchant, I guess. Or we could just do like a, a market right here. It doesn't have to necessarily be religious. It's just like, you know, maybe the, maybe the religious aspect of it, like, I don't know, maybe they fund this marketplace or something. All right. Make way for this thing, please. There we go. And let's do buildings, do some green buildings. To round it out. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let's just change the roof color to dark green. Where is the marketplace? Here we go. Team color, dark green. Yeah, that looks great. I forgot how many neutral buildings actually have player colors. It's pretty cool. Um, no problem, Modern Moonlight. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, this will be available to watch later, so feel free. Um, all right, so that's those. I'm, I'm wondering if. Okay, yeah. Let's do a. Uh, let's just do like a goblin um, merchant for the. Um, okay, I kind of don't like that Jass helper thing because I'm not going to use Jass. Seems like it takes longer to render everything for nothing. All right, back into it. Um, yeah, so let's just do like a goblin merchant right here. And I'm having serious problems with pathing right now. Let's just get rid of that one. Don't need it. There we go. And I don't think that this has a player color. Nah, doesn't we don't have to worry about it. All right, so we got like magic items, normal items, like maybe armor and weapons and stuff. This could be like potions and scrolls and whatnot. And then we got, or maybe this could be potions since it's a tavern. Hmm. Be thinking of that and whatever you guys think uh, about, you know, what those work with. We can kind of work with those later. Um, I was also thinking it'd be kind of fun to have like a black market or something. Let's have let's let's make a black market. This is just a marketplace. Don't care about the ID. Thank you very much. So this is kind of like the underground buying thing. And this team color will be neutral hostile, which is black. Um, oh, come on. that overlapping. I have to 
just fill it in around it after I place it. There we go. Okay, so there's the black market, and then the, what was the structure? Just kind of a blue. There we go. And one more blue one here to kind of hide it. There we go. Looks good. So there's a little black market you can go to and buy illicit goods. I'm not sure what would be illicit, but yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, those those are in place. We'll get to those a little bit later. Let's go ahead and make our hero. Does anybody have any really good ideas for a hero? Because I was thinking just like, at first I was just thinking like Arthas. Like it's easy to just have like a swordsman hero and whatnot. However, I do want to have it be like a little unique. And so I was thinking, what if we had a rifleman? Like we had a rifleman hero and all of his abilities were like different gunshots and stuff. Like he shot like a you know, like a, a flaming shot and it would light them on fire, or like a bomb shot that would do area effect damage, poison bullet, I don't know. If anybody has any better uh, ideas, that would be that would be fun. And remember that we do have like a an actual town setting, so it's probably a you know, a good aligned campaign and you're not gonna be like an orc wandering around here and stuff. Uh, while you guys are thinking about that, though, um, I did forget that there are campaign critters, which are villagers. So let's go ahead and put some of these around. Just like random villagers and stuff. There's like some like in their backyards for some reason. Not sure if these have these guys wander like critters, but we can give them that ability if we want to. And some women. Um, yeah, just kind of you know all the way around here. Maybe I'll have like a little family here with some children and a few more children just kind of around there. All right, cool. So that's kind of the town. All right, what what uh, suggestions you got? Captain would be pretty good. It's kind of the same as Arthas, though. It's just a little bit vanilla, I guess. Um, mage hero could be interesting. That is true. I, if we're gonna have like mercenaries that you can hire, I kind of want it to be like a backline fighter. I don't know, like, honestly, like, we could make this as complicated as we wanted if we wanted this to be, like, a, like a huge map. Like, we could have, you know, like, at the beginning, you choose your hero, and it could be a mage, a fighter, a wizard, or a thief, or something, but I don't know. I think we should just make it pretty simple. A treant. Pandaren swordsman. Hmm. Well, you know, I love Pandarens. <laughs> No, I, I don't mind Pandaren that much, especially in Warcraft 3. I just think that it kind of got out of hand, and I don't much like Mists of Pandaria on WoW. But, like, the fl the fire... Uh, where is it? Yeah, like, this guy... Like, I do like this guy. He's pretty cool. He's, like, dual-wielding swords and stuff. That would actually be hilarious be kind of fun to have this hero and like he would have like the voice of a paladin or something <laughs> like imagine the paladin and he's like what would you ask of me i am not afraid that would be hilarious you know what let's do that for now that that would be pretty funny because i don't want to do just like a normal hero that's available on anything you know let's let's make like a unique hero <laughs> He has a funny death animation. Actually, he probably doesn't have a death animation, so I just like picked his walk animation. So yeah, let's, let's do that one. I kind of like that dual wielding uh, Pandaren guy. Okay, let's see here. So, what hero is he most gonna be based on? He's probably gonna be agility based because he'll be attacking like 
quickly with those dual wielding swords. Human doesn't have any agility based, it's all magic and might. The Blade Master seems like a, a logical choice, huh? Alright, so he'll be called a I don't know, what what what's what type of hero is he? Because heroes have names, and we'll just come up with a name for him. Uh, but what type of hero would he be? A goblin artificer with a robot partner. Oh, these are all good ideas. Maybe at some point we could... I don't know. Like I said, this is going to be available for you guys on like for download once I'm done with it and stuff. And so if you guys want to like... You know, make your own heroes once this is available. Feel free, use these ideas and make your own maps. That's what this, that's what this series is all about: is teaching you guys how you how you can make your own maps and stuff. So these are really good ideas. But yeah, let's go and do this. Pandaren Swordmaster. I like that Swordmaster. We'll just keep it like that. Ah, I don't care. Obla. I assume these have like are related to like hero and unit, whatever. But I don't really know. Okay, game interface. I think his name is just Fire. All right. Fire. I can't believe how useful that is. I am already just loving that. Okay, score screen is what it shows at the end after you win. It shows like a little icon. I usually don't care that much. I'll just do Fire. I don't think that's the right size, but who cares. And the model file is also fire. Oh, fire revenant. Nope, fire. There we go. All right. So we got that. He doesn't have a death animation, I just realized. That could be kind of problematic, but it might be kind of funny. So we'll just keep it for now. Okay. So. Oh, do these guys have player colors? I don't know if they do. Oh, maybe it's their like hero glow at the bottom actually, because I'm neutral passive right now. Yeah, and when they're <laughs> um, okay here. Okay, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's let's customize some stuff first. So let's change his race to. Again, a lot of these things are just important on like the map editor, but some things matter as well. Like for example, race. There it is. I'm just going to do human because he's going to be, you know, among all the human units and stuff. But if he's, like, for example, undead, I'm pretty sure if you make an undead hero, they'll do that thing where they die and then the ghost comes out of them. That thing. And the other races don't do that. And so it, it kind of matters. So play around with some of these things when you do this. Uh, his sound set will not be the Blade Master, although that Japanese accent would actually be fitting for Pandaren, so that's kind of funny to think about. Uh, no, it will be... Let's do the Paladin. That's going to be pretty funny. Oh, there's a search bar there. I love it. Hero Paladin. Or we could do Uther. Let me see what the difference is. I know that I just did a video on this and stuff, so I listened to some of Uther's lines. He just sounds a little different from the Paladin. I am here. Do not fear. The light is with us. We shall not falter. I like this. Right. For Lordaeron, for the Silver Hand, light curse you. Okay, he's kind of religious about it, but... Justice will be served. Defending your name. Strike with great vengeance. I like the Paladin better. Let's change. Let's just have him have the Paladin voice. Ah! Not the campaign editor. Gosh, there we go. Okay, yeah, we'll just leave it with the Paladin, because it's funny. An explosion as a death animation. Um, so, he, well, let me show you a little bit about anim animation, because it is kind of important. Ah, okay, let's see, what color should we be? He's in kind of a red coat, but that doesn't have to necessarily dictate anything. It does look cool, though. Or maybe, like, yellow? How would he look in yellow? Ooh. Why is it lagging so bad when I drag stuff around? That's weird. Uh, is there like, among the new colors, is there like gold or something? Like, what does peanut look like? That's pretty cool. It's just kind of like a warm orange color. Peach? Ugh, I don't like that.
orange. Let's do orange. That looks pretty sweet. Okay, so let's do a little bit of housekeeping here. So you change. So you want you, every map needs at least one user, obviously. And so let's do user. This is basically since this is an RPG, this will just be the interface. And so it'll be human. He's obviously not undead or anything. Let's name him. Let's name him Dante. Dante the Swordsman. So the way that proper names work is you have this list of random names that the character ha that the character might have when you uh, train them. Uh, since we just want one name, since this is just going to be one game. Dante. There we go. Loading, loading. Okay, there we go. So our player name is Dante's like forces and stuff, and he's the user. Uh, this one doesn't necessarily need to be anything right now. We'll come up with like which ones are the enemies and stuff. But one thing that's important is you go into here to forces, use custom forces, and then fixed player settings. That will make it so that you won't have a random race every time. Like it'll just force you to be human so you don't like load it and have an undead um, interface and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, uh, explosion as a death animation. We could do that with triggers maybe. We'll see how it looks when he dies and go from there. Ally priorities, that's not really important right now. Right now, I, in fact, we're gonna keep all this kind of simple. Like, I'll just have like neutral passive be the villagers and stuff instead of having them be an actual guy, uh, you know, an actual uh, <laughs> um, player or whatever. So yeah, he is pretty big. Um, man, that's kind of bothering me. Um, you know what, let's, I'm gonna save and get out and back in because, oh yeah, and each player needs a, uh, starting location. That's just where your screen starts at the beginning. Alright, I'm gonna save and get out and back in because something's gone wrong with that weird, uh, frame rate. So let's just see if I have to get out and back in and see if that works. All right. Let's make a map. Okay. All right, um, yeah, so obviously he's way too big, you're right. So let's change his scale to mm, 0.7. That looks better. Okay, so there's our little Dante hero. And um, he's already got a hero glow, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, there is a way to add hero glow um, just with like there's like an asset that I'll probably share with you guys. In fact, you know what? I'm going to just import it just to show you guys. So there's a thing called Aura MDX that I got from the Hive Workshop. There's also one called Aura Weapon, and they're just models that I imported, and it's just a hero glow. Like you can add it to any unit, and it'll make them look like a hero. So that's pretty cool. So I, I'll probably. I'll see if I can get to that later. If not, at least it's in the import thing, so you guys can use it later, and I'll. I'll just go over it briefly, even if we don't end up using the unit. Um, okay. Okay, so there's our Dante guy. So let's go ahead and let's just kind of keep going with the units for now. Let's let's make let's make the enemies be blue player. Kind of switch things up. Usually the good guys are blue, but. Computer. I usually make them undead or orc, just cause. And we'll call these the dark minions. 
I don't even know what our story is and whatnot in the game. We may not even get to that, but that sounds pretty cool. So we'll just go with Dark Mains. So let's just go ahead and just make some creeps and kind of populate our dungeons. So in the underground area, let's go, well, let's go to dungeon and see what enemies they have. I'm thinking, I guess maybe we should decide how, like, what the difficulty of our game should be. Should we have each dungeon just kind of have, like, weak units close to the entrance and then they get harder the deeper and you go? Or should each dungeon be, like, a number in a list, like how hard it is? I kind of like that better. Yeah, let's start with the forest. And the forest can kind of be the easy, uh, the easy map. So instead, let's go to Ashenvale and see what things they have. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so you go in here and you find some fur bulks, we'll say. There's like three fur bulks there. Uh, well, no, that's that's boring. Let's do two little fur bulks and a fur bulk shaman. Oh my gosh, the fur bulk shaman's tiny. That's funny. Uh, I guess those are like level four. Let's make it a little easier here. Okay, trolls are easy. So let's do some dark trolls. They look pretty cool. So we'll do two of those and a priest. Um, over here by this wooded area, we'll do some satyrs. These are really easy, so we'll make a lot of them. And a shadow dancer to lead them. And again, like, if I had all the time in the world, I would, like make all of these from scratch so that you could have a more unique world than what the world editor has to offer but again let's keep it simple um it seems like the satyrs would be like the heck Fine. no idea why it's lagging uh seems like they might be like drawn to a fountain for some reason so let's go ahead and make them guarding the fountain and then just kind of here in the woods, we could just have some timber wolves wandering around. So they're kind of just like a little in between monsters and stuff. Um, in this rainy area, we could have some murlocs. One thing that I'm very excited about with uh, Reforged is that every creep is going to be unique. So, what I mentioned earlier about the tinting colors, like for example, uh, I guess this isn't the best example. I'll come back to that. Um, and then there should be something kind of interesting here. We'll make this be kind of a furbolg den area. There's like a shaman and a big old champion. Whoops, that was weird. There we go. So that's kind of what'll be behind that in that secret area, and maybe they're guarding something. Oh, there we go. For some reason, the lagging stopped. So that's good news. Murlocs need water. You're right. You're right. Let's add, let's give them some shallows. It's kind of a little pond in the forest. I like it. I don't know why they're trees in it. Look at those. Okay, there's the murlocs. And I'm going to see if I can get rid of their spikes, because I don't really like their spikes. That's something that came with um, uh, Frozen Throne, and I like the way they used to look. So we got a couple tide runners and a huntsman, right? Yeah. So if you go to model file extra version you can change which version the model comes from this is how you can change like a destroyer back into a catapult that sort of thing so let's change into reign of chaos and see if that fixes it, them to be back to normal hey look at that <laughs> i like them better that way with a little fin on their back instead of the spikes Amazing how fast Murlocs evolved. They used to be like these frog guys, then they got spikes, and they turned into like fish people on WoW, so kind of funny. Alright, 
So yeah, you got your little pond there. Um, just give him some cattails. Uh, another thing you can do is with neutral passive, you can add like little just huts and stuff. These are fun for like concealing items in them. Uh, I, you know, there are a lot, as you know, in the campaign, there's a lot of those. Um, they're often not made the actual enemy units, just passive, so you can destroy them. You're not, your units aren't going to destroy them automatically and stuff. Okay, so that's good for Ashen Vale. Um, anything else? Could do some spiders, I guess. That could be kind of fun. Uh, okay, so here's what we should do. What should be the forest boss? Ideas. Fairy dragons at the fountain, huh? That's a good idea. I actually really like that. Yeah, why, why are we just using creeps? Let's use other stuff too. That could be fun. Yeah, like a fairy dragon. Yeah, I like that. A couple of fairy dragons around the pond. Um, and then, you know, you could even do some... Like a... I don't know, like a hippogriff flying around. Whoops, why am I doing teal? My bad. There we go. What was I doing? Oh yeah, like a let's do like a hippogriff flying over here. Why not? Uh, anyway, ideas with the boss. I want the uh, bosses to be... You guys can go crazy with the bosses. Let's make them unique, because I'm just kind of throwing on creeps right here, but that's so that we can save time for, like, a really interesting boss. So what do you guys think would be a fun boss? Like, it could be, like, a giant chimera that, like, I don't know, lights stuff on fire, or it could be, like, a big mountain giant, or it could be an ancient, like we could have a, you know, like a giant ancient tree that was, that you could fight, or maybe it was like a blighted tree, and when you destroyed it, it turned into a normal tree, or something. I don't know. What do you guys think? Any ideas? Corrupted satyr, treant boss, biggest panda ever. That's already been done before. A wood giant, huh? A sasquatch with shaman minions. Hmm. That could be fun. Which one is Sasquatch in? I believe that's in the village. So yeah, we could do like a giant Sasquatch. With like a couple shamans around to help him out, maybe. I kind of like the idea of an ancient but put a pin in that Sasquatch because it could fit somewhere else. Like, I think a cave could be fun for that, maybe. So, all right. So for now, you know what? Let's, okay, I'll make, a, I'll make unique units for the bosses so we can keep them straight. Um, is there any high level things? What's the highest level thing here? The Furbolg Champion's the best. All right, well, based on that, uh, it'll be called uh, Blight Bark. Let's come up with cool names for our bosses. Because why not? All right, so Blight Bark will be a corrupted tree. Yeah, let's do a corrupted ancient of uh, ancient protector because those just kind of. I guess look the least weird, like the least alien, I guess. Uh, they kind of just look more like, um, like, you know, the Ancient of War looks like a building. It's got like those, that crest on its back. It's got, I don't know, it's got like decor, but a protector is just kind of like a big bearded tree. All right, so let's make it big. We want these bosses to be big challenges. So let's do, uh, Did I do this in Ashenville? There we go. So there is Blight Bark. Yeah, I like it. So that's our enemy right there. Maybe he'll summon like corrupted treants to fight. We can kind of come up with those later. But there's okay. So there's Blight Bark, and our forest is 
pretty much populated. I think we could fit in a few more uh, minions here. How about like just some bandits or something in the woods? That sounds like it could be reasonable. Whoops, no. I want some ranged. There we go. It could be like, you know, hiding out in the forest to escape taxes or something. Uh, and then let's just kind of make tents for them and like a fire pit and stuff cool all right so that's it for now let's just kind of go through and sprinkle these minions on the different areas real quick just so we can get to the fun stuff um this cave i'm thinking that like a golem could live here so i think that's a village as well Um, yeah, so let's have like a big old golem garden that one. A couple of little ones. Uh, Alright, so. For Northrend, we have. Got some more wolves for the pathways. Second, guys, the AC is not on right now, and it's really hot in here. Okay, so yeah, we got some timber rolls just kind of wandering around. Um, we could have an encounter with some. Okay, what 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 could be worshiping this? Like some trolls could be gathered around this ice spire that we made. Oh, I guess I didn't really take difficulty into account. Um, we'll say, let me make this a little bit harder. Sure, why not? Uh, we got some polar fur bulbs. Ooh, let's do like a polar fur bulb with a pet polar bear. That could be fun. Yeah, like a giant polar bear and a shaman, like just together. That's kind of a cool combination uh oh the trigger with the uh that makes the golem spawn yeah I, I can definitely do that bulk that'd be fun it's basically like a sleeping animation for them uh mammoth there is a mammoth on here somewhere maybe that's an ice crown we can find that in a minute for now let's see here we can make some like ghosts what is wrong with my mouse? Like, it's clicking different things. That's just started doing that with like a recent patch for some reason. <sighs> okay, I guess we can't do those right now. Um, do some Wendigos. Uh, maybe some. Are there any more like clearings? Here's one. Here's some frost revenants. I'm thinking, yeah, let me go to, does winter have anything unique in it? Not really. Let's check Ice Crown. Oh yeah, this has got all like alien stuff from the below Ice Crown Glacier. I didn't really add any clearings in here, did I? I just kind of made pathways. That's okay, we can just do more here. Yeah, let's do... Let's do some Tuscar over here, like kind of close to the water. Everybody knows they love their fishing. What level are these? Oh, it's too easy. Do like a big warrior and a couple trappers. Cool. Oh, what I was talking about earlier. So. Presumably, if I understand correctly, if you notice, see this Tuscar fighter, he's got like an ice axe, and that's about it, right? And the Tuscar healer, same model, he's got like a gray mustache though, and he's tinted slightly red or yellow. Uh, the Tuscar warrior, same, just a bigger healer, right? And then the sorcerer and the trapper, and I think the spearmen are all slightly different ones because they have painted tusks and ice daggers. Anyway, 
presumably on Warcraft Reforged, what they're going to do is make each creep unique. So there's going to be a specific Tuskar fighter unit, spearman, healer unit, trapper, warrior, sorcerer. So we'll see if that comes to pass, but if it does, that's going to be awesome. Oh, interesting. A, a Tuskar chieftain, which is... Oh, they all have to, they all have painted tusks. Never mind. Okay, so that's that's them, I guess. It's a shame that we don't have more time to do stuff like this because it'd be pretty fun. Um, I want to do a dragon at some point. Should we do like a frost dragon already, or do like a? Hmm. Oh, I like that idea. Nice, nicey polar bear boss and he eats the penguins and they heal him <laughs> that would be amazing except I really want to use the mammoth too let's do a mammoth I like mammoths obviously aren't probably honestly these are such weird mammoths so look it has no trunk it's just a big like mouth it's kind of creepy yeah that's so gross it's like an elephant that has no trunk Anyway, I don't care if mammoths aren't carnivorous. Let's have a straight-up mammoth that, like, eats penguins or something. That would be hilarious. Uh, what is the level? Ooh, it's already pretty high, so I'll just copy the dire mammoth. As far as I know, I don't think there's a mammoth in any of the campaigns, which is kind of weird to think about. All right, I've got to make it at least two. Um, let me see, just for comparison, how big that is compared to, like, a, a hero. Alright, that's pretty big. Let's make it a little bigger, though. Alright, so there's our giant mammoth. Any ideas for what he should be named? Something tusk, maybe? How about... Lance Tusk. It's not great, but whatever. Double boss fight, and if the mammoth eats the penguins, it gets stronger. Interesting. And then, so you'd want to, like, kill the penguins before they <laughs> came out or something. That could be pretty fun. Problem is... It's gonna look weird with the snow. Eh, it doesn't look too bad, actually. So yeah, we'll just once I get to the triggers stream, we'll talk about how penguins like just come out of the water, I guess, and into his waiting jaws. That would be pretty hilarious. We can get that to work. I don't know how hard that'll be, but I don't know. In fact, I don't know how much of this we're even going to end up finishing in the end. But let's just kind of leave it open and whatever we don't finish, you guys can finish on your own. You know, this can kind of be like a starter map sort of thing. All right, so there's our Lance Tusk Mammoth guy. Uh, let's kind of go counterclockwise here. So here we got the swamp. And it's something with like a big pool in here. So we can kind of do something like that. All right, so back to creeps. Let's, let's have some undead in here. I mean, it's blighted, obviously, so let's have, like, let's have some, let's have some ghouls kind of mucking around in the water. Oh, yeah, there's frogs. And then... Definitely want skeletons and stuff. It's just kind of like a straight-up haunted swamp. Uh, let's do like little combinations of skeleton, skeletons, skeleton mages, and skeletal archers. And then we'll go to Fellwood for more inspiration. Um, yeah, plagued murlocs all the way. Uh, 
That's weird. I wonder why I can't place them right there. Huh. I thought they could swim, but... Oh, this is so weird. Yeah, see, look, it looks like I'm selecting the spider, but I'm not. See, these ones I'm fine with having spikes. Like, that actually looks really cool to have, like, a mutated murloc with spikes. But just the normal ones, they just have their little fins. Sludge minions are really good. Ah, no, 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 no. What is going on? This is the weirdest bug. Like, it just selects random ones. Dang it. That sucks. Can I do them here? Okay, good. I can't hear, I guess. Let's have these guys over here. It's like they are the ones that screwed up the fountain or something. And just some like other ones over here. Anything else we can think of? I guess the Felwood was kind of tainted by, like, um, demons and stuff, but I don't know how much I want to do that in here. I want to save that for, like, that last one with, like, hell and stuff. Okay, we got lily pads here. Let's put a few more murlocs. Uh, that's pretty good. I kind of want this one to just be, like, swarms of stuff, you know? Like, not... Not anything like super hard, but there's just lots of them. Let's do a few more undead units. You know, like, let's have some banshees wandering around. Actually, you know what? Banshees are traditionally like ice spirits, I think. So let's just make a few like. And... By the way, this is like really bad placement. I'm just kind of throwing them around. In actual maps, you, you should keep track of like how far away they are from other ones, so that you don't end up getting like them all mixing together for a single brawl or whatever, but I don't really care right now. We'll have some necromancers in here, you know, kind of retreated to the swamp and they're the ones contributing to its corruption and whatnot. Uh, how about some gargoyle statues? That could be sweet. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of these skeletons here and just kind of make a like a statue-like display of gargoyles here, and then when you approach, they all come to life and attack. That could be fun. Um, for this boss, what do you guys think? Undead, swamp, like, should we do like a giant sludge monstrosity that does something? Or should we go big with undead, like a frost worm? Well, no, frost worm's kinda, kinda icy, isn't it? I know, let's do a destroyer. These things are freaking scary. And they don't get enough. I, I don't play with them enough because they're kind of late game units and I already suck at, uh, um, oh, I know what that idea is. Uh, that's you for undead, I think. Huh, weird. Anyway, yeah, let's do it. Let's do a destroyer. And let's just make him large as well. Oh, weird. He's by default smaller than normal. Ooh, that is real scary. I like that a lot. Look at that. So he's like the one behind all the undead corruption and stuff. And he could have... Kind of going with the swarm thing. What if he had like abomination minions and when the abominations died they turn into like I don't know smaller abominations and then like skeletons pop out of those or something like that that could be kind of fun um anyway let's just kind of come up with a name for him as well how about myothricos All right, not as great as it could be, obviously, but we can kind of tinker with these later. Let's, we gotta put something there, though. Um, let's put, like, just a straight up spirit tower right here. Like, you know, how often do you fight, like, an actual tower when you're fighting creeps? Not very often. So we can have a bunch of, like, necromancers kind of gathered around that with their skeleton minions and 
Is anything not occupied? Pretty much all the islands are occupied. There's a couple beetles. I don't know why they're in the water. Seems like that wouldn't be good for beetles, but whatever. Okay. Okay, so the swamp's done. We'll just kind of be done with that. Okay, so the the thing I'm thinking with the this hellish area here is um, you go into this first ring, and then you go down here, fight all the demons over here. Like, you basically have to clear the ring of demons, and then this opens. I think that could be pretty fun. So this, we could have some fun with this, and have it be like... Oh, I just thought of something. Let's have their actually, like, it's straight up closed off from the beginning, and you have to defeat all the other bosses for this one to open. That could be fun. And then you go in here and you fight the first layer of demons, which is best found in Outland. So that could just be like a, a I'm just going to make a lone, like, fell boar just wandering around the entrance. That could be pretty funny. Um, but let's see here. First, I think in like fell hounds first off. I, I think it's dumb that they stop being called fell hounds. They're called like fell stalkers and fell beasts and stuff. But oh no, not again! Ugh, that is such a frustrating bug. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we'll first, we'll first start with like void walkers and junk. These are not going to be that hard right now because at this point in the game you've already defeated all the bosses, but I don't know. Maybe we'll just, maybe these will end up being a lot more harder once we modify them or something. I don't know. Whatever, there's a whole bunch of demons to fight. Maybe like one right here just to kind of give you a taste of that at the beginning. And we'll, just to make it so they're not all void walkers, we'll put in some succubi in there too. Wild temptress there. That's the queen of suffering. Oh, well, she's powerful. Let's save her for later. Okay, so then so void walkers and a couple succubi on the first level. Um, thank you, auto save. And then the second layer. Let's do. Okay, there's only three layers in a boss, so we gotta kind of space this out. Second layer, let's do let's do a couple of infernal contraptions. That could be fun. And yeah, maybe some warlocks manning them. These units aren't great because they already they have hero glows, which is kind of bothers me because we got mages, siege in the back, foot soldiers. Um, but yeah, it kind of bothers me that they have hero glows. Because they're copied from Archimon, but I don't know. I mean, would it have been that hard to just take off the hero glow? And then, like, a big old warlock in the back. In fact, heck with that. I'm going to do a Queen of Suffering on each of those, too. Kind of as like a back boss there. Um, okay, so that's good so far. And now let's get to the big guns, like the the classic demons from Frozen Throne. We got like Doom Guards, like multiple Doom Guards. These things are like level eight, so they're pretty powerful. So let's end up like fighting quite a few of those and like Infernals all over the place. And, oh, what's this? Oh, an Infernal Juggernaut. Heck yeah. How awesome does that look? Those are sweet. Okay. Um, kill Jaden as a boss. That's a good idea. Uh, low vegan. Let's, I like that. I, I like the idea of just straight up the devil himself there at the bottom. And kill Jaden is freaking scary. Uh, let's see, does he have... He does have a unit. Perfect. Uh, yeah, let's make him just a straight-up hero, because then he can have, like, some hero abilities and stuff. 
Actually, I guess it doesn't really matter. No, he could have like items. That would be really cool. All right, let's copy kill Jaden. He will be, his hero type will be Archdevil. And his name shall be uh, Cash. So Cash, the Archdevil, is like the end boss of the game and he'll be like super hard and everything. Uh, where is he exactly? Did he? Oh, I need to turn off. I think he's a cam campaign unit. Isn't he? Special? Is that what it's called? Nope. Uh, where is he? Yeah, he's a special undead unit. How do you turn it off, Susan? Maybe it doesn't matter for custom units. Okay, we're good. All right, so here's Denethor Cash. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want the end boss to be super powerful. Like, I think we should have like him be in the middle, and you're like fighting him, but then like demons are just swarming in from all sides to like stop you from killing him and stuff. That'd be cool. Let's make him like real big. Oops, what am I doing? I changed. Oops! It killed the. I changed the actual kill Jaden to be three scale. We need another cash. Okay. Kill Jaden's sweet. He's got like fiery eyes and stuff, so that's that's gonna be fun. And how big are heroes compared to him? Yeah, he needs to be bigger. Bigger. There we go. He's just gonna be like on fire with immolation, so he's gonna be like burning everybody around, and it's gonna be sweet. Um, he's gonna be level 10. Actually, what do warlocks have as abilities? Okay, well, actually, ugh, maybe that wasn't a good move to do kill Jaden because, does he even have, okay, he's based on like, uh, all right, he's, it's just not that, we're good. All right, cool, so that'll be a sweet, ending boss and let me check real quick um ooh good idea bulg that could be pretty fun like the like a giant succubus or something. Or maybe she could come and revive him after he's dead and then all the demons could come. Like a multi-stage boss fight. That could be fun. Good idea. We'll keep that in mind. Um, there's like a thing called like demon circles or something. Are they cinematic? You could have some floating rocks. That would be pretty cool. Oh, it's like a whole cluster? Oof. Okay. I guess. Um, I'll, I'll check the doodads. Footprints demonic. Actually, that could be kind of fun to have demonic footprints leading, like, right through. That could be kind of cool. Like. Citadel. Okay, that's probably what it is. And it is a prop. Okay, I'll check that. Uh, where is it? Okay, uh, I guess that's actually what I was thinking, yeah. Actually, you know what? Here, I, I want to show you guys 
something cool that you can do. I was going to do this last time with when we did doodads, but I'll do it now. So what you can do is, in the object editor, you can change the model to be stuff besides doodads. So, for example, like I could make a doodad that was straight up unholy aura. Oh, cool, look, that's a new effect. I've never seen that yet, because that's a new ability in Sight and Unholy Frenzy. That's kind of cool. I didn't notice that. I wonder if that makes a new noise or something. I'll have to check. Anyway, yeah, I want, I want like, summoning circles. So let's make this variation 1. And let's make the tinting color just straight up, like, pure green. I might change it to red, but we'll start with this. And we'll call it summoning. Okay, so watch this. Look, see? You can make doodads that are based on special effects. I've done this before with, like, Devotion Aura to make, like, a holy-looking thing, like, made it yellow or something. Look at that. That looks... I like that a lot. That's pretty cool. So that's where all the demons will summon to... Like, once he's dead, his queen will appear and one of them come up, bring him back to life. Then you have to fight both of them and a bunch of demons coming in. Just totally overkill. He's pretty cool. And I just can't resist making a bunch of bones or something. Because he's like the lord of hell and whatnot. So. And... But this is not the doodads stream, this is the unit stream, so I'll get back on track. But it is kind of fun, like once you're once you get into making a map, like the units kind of start giving you new ideas and stuff. So I, I like that idea. Oh, yeah, sure, why not? Make a random starting location for them. Okay. So that, that fog is what it'll look like in the game, but cool. So that will be really fun to fight. Um next is the underground one. This is really cramped, and so I was kind of thinking it'd be fun to have just like some traps in here, maybe, in addition to units. But put some flames in there, you have to dodge, that's a good idea. Oh, here's something kind of cool I'll show you guys. It kind of has to do with units. Um, so I think it's neutral, special. What is it? It's a goblin landmine. Where, where are the goblin landmines? It is a campaign unit. That's That shouldn't be a campaign unit. That's weird. Because it's. I think it's in the main game. You can have it as a unit. Or I mean an item. Oh well. Anyway, so this is kind of a trick that I found out on uh, the Blizzard scenario War Chasers. This is pretty cool. So... Hmm. I'll just put them here, actually. So what you can do is you can put, like, goblin landmines. And then over them, you can put fire traps. Right? And it's really simple to make a trigger so that every time a goblin landmine explodes, it looks around the goblin landmine for that doodad and deletes it. So basically, these fire traps will stay until they're detonated. So basically, you won't see these, and it'll look like the fire trap itself is what's doing damage to you, but it's actually an invisible goblin landmine. So I thought that was kind of a cool idea. Um, ooh. Good idea, Naishi. A golem boss that splits into smaller golems several times. That's a that's a fun idea. Um, yeah, I I can't think of any other um, I can't think of any other uh, underground ones that would work that well. That that would be really fun, and it could go on for like an absurd amount of time. You know, like it could just be like 
like he could be huge and by the end you're fighting like you know the square of like six different times and they're all just getting tinier and tinier i like that idea a lot so let's make let's go ahead and make one of those right away um i think they're in village not campaign yeah great idea so what should the golem's name be how about Malgwir. I don't care what the idea is. ID is. I'll move along. So Malgwir will be the end boss here. I'm not exactly sure what this portal is, but I just left it there because it's cool. I'm wondering if maybe we could make it like like you could do a quest for the wizards or something where they're like a portal key was stolen or something and then you go here and close the portal and take the key back and then they open a portal so you can I don't know something like that oh thanks for subscribing whoever that was alright so the giant golem Malgwir will be and yeah he'll be immune to spell mm, I hate that ability though I think that's dumb because it, it just kind of limits what you can even do on, like, on the game. You just kind of hack at them. Let's do resistance skin. That way, I think he does like he takes less damage from spells, but I could check, but something like that. Um, I don't want it to be purple. Um. Let's make him big, though. Yeah. So he's that big. And then he drops two that are, like, two scale, and then one scale, and then 0.5, and it just, like, keeps multiplying and multiplying. Have any of you guys played uh, Orcs Must Die? I love that game. Kind of like the Earth Elementals on that game. All right, cool. So that'll be sweet. Uh, tinting color. Let me select him so we can get rid of that weird purple color. I think if we just change him to normal color, he'll just be kind of a rock color, which looks fine. Maybe a little darker. Let's go 180 all around. Not dark enough. Let's go 100 all around. Okay, yeah, like a dark rock golem or something. Pretty cool. Oh, good idea, Leet Noob Inc. Uh, deflects one spell on cooldown. That's a great idea. Um, a way we could do that is give him a hero inventory. Dang it, I hate not being able to do that, but I guess this makes up for it. Okay, we'll give him an inventory. And then in his inventory, he'll have one of those, uh, what's it called? A spell shield. Amulet of spell shield. Yeah, that could be pretty cool. I wonder if those stack, because that could be kind of fun. He has like six of them, and it's like you have to like wear those out before you can, I don't know. I guess that's not going to be really that important, because you're going to be breaking them down anyway, but that's great. I love that. And then by the end, you're just getting wailed on by these tiny little golems. That's going to be so much fun. Um, I forgot to put a, a gate here, and there's actually a really cool one in... Um, oh, it, it might be in the dungeon, actually. Or underground. It's a rolling stone gate or something. I know there's one sunken ruins, but that would look weird here. Oh, come on. They're only horizontal and vertical. Oh, cool. I forgot about this too bad. <laughs> um, dang it. Okay, you know what? Let's just put it right here, I guess. Wait, what are these different? 
Okay, that one looks better. So this is actually a really cool gate that I haven't seen very many times. If it dies, then the stone rolls away. It's pretty cool, actually. Oh, wait, no. There's room right here. I'll do a vertical one, actually. Oh, cool, and it matches with the cliffs automatically, even though it's sunken ruins. Sweet. Okay, I gotta see if that's... Okay, good. So that way this cavern's, like, completely natural looking. Like, the other ones have, like, you know, demon gates and... Oh, I guess that one needs one, too. Might as well get that while we're at it. Is there, like, an ice gate or something? Icy gate. Perfect. Excellent. So there we go, having an icy gate there. Just like an elven gate there. This one's called a demon gate, but it's a straight up night elf gate. I don't know why they call it a demon gate. Maybe I should make that one different. That one should be... I think there's an iron gate. Dungeon gate, maybe that's it. There we go. That looks better. Ah, can't get back to the normal. There we go. Okay, so that's that gate. Let's just make each one unique. We got that. We got that. And now we have, like, just a straight-up earthen gate right there. Ah, I know I'm being picky or finicky, but... I mean fickle, but let's do the... Let's do, do the horizontal one, because I just I want to be able to see it. Like, it's so cool-looking. Okay, we're done. Uh, okay, and then as far as undead, or not undead, um, underground minions go, what have they got here? More golems. We could do a few golems just to kind of, like, foreshadow the boss, I guess. And I made this little area up here because, like, maybe you'll be able to look down and see him or something. Of course, if you, uh... If you're able to like shoot him from there, that might be an exploit, so I might end up changing that, but we'll see. Uh, kobolds. Kobolds are perfect uh, enemies for the mines because they mine and stuff, so we'll put like lots of little kobold parties in here. Not many encounters like usual, but big one right there, a whole bunch of little ones right here. That's odd that wildkins are underground. Oh yeah, they are kind of underground in like the Illidan mission and stuff like that, huh? Hmm. I like salamanders. Those could be fun to have. They're kind of like underground in the like volcanic depths kind of thing, so those could be fun. Um, it's really, there's really not much room in here to do much else, so. Uh, maybe we'll kind of do a mixture of these, like, um. Like these kobolds have domesticated that one or something, who knows. Um, one thing I want to do is, there's a thing that's, it might be used in the campaign more than I think it is, but it's called like a line of sight blocker. It's probably called a destructible, no, it's not destructible. Yeah, line of sight blocker. These are kind of useful. It's kind of like on League of Legends and Heroes of the Storm, like the bushes. They keep you to, uh, you know, they, um, they block your line of sight, basically. Uh, and I like to make them on here and then, like, hide them with bushes. So let's go ahead and try that. The thing is, is for some reason they have pathing. Like, like they actually block your pathing as well. I don't know exactly what they're for in the campaign, but this is how I use them. Change the um, pathing texture to mushrooms. 
because you can just walk over those or magical runes. And then you go to pathing blockers and you do line of sight blocker. Uh, so see, I'm going to make just kind of a... So see, I'm just going to kind of block the line of sight right there and then get some shrubs. Ooh, actually mushrooms could be fun. Hmm. Those are mostly just like for decoration, just like little mushrooms, I guess, huh? Oh, this is sunken ruins? That's weird. I thought it was... I always fit really well either way, though. Okay, enough with the doodads. Uh, what was I looking for? Shrubs, I guess. Kind of weird that they're underground, but for now, this is just what I'll use them for. So, when we're testing later, it might look like that's just like a barrier. But if you just walk right through the grass, you can find this little semi-secret area. <laughs> hungry, hungry salamanders. That's funny. That's a fun Easter egg. It was kind of interesting how they programmed it as well. Um, I like your idea of miners that went mad. Um, let's move this guy. Let's move this domesticated salamander pet or whatever over here. Kill these guys off and then make them just like peasants. <laughs> they're just peasants that have been lost here forever and they're gone mad or something. That could be pretty funny. Um... I don't know. That'll be kind of more of a... We'll have to change the triggers on that situation to make it work, because obviously peasants aren't a threat, but if they, like, I don't know, were, like, knocking down support columns so that you're getting damaged by debris or something, I don't know. Triggers are often kind of the future, and so we can kind of just see how much we can get to later on. Um, any other ideas for underground? We have one more location, so if you guys have any good ideas. Siege engines, huh? That could be kind of fun. There are actual mine carts in here. Which are actually pretty cool. Um, is it carts or mines or... some torches at least in like the areas that the miners went and then they the rest of it's unexplored um here we go mine cart yeah see so maybe so maybe they're you know they found what they were looking for here and they're like rich but they're like also trapped and like running out of food and who knows Maybe they ate each other or something like that. That could be pretty funny. In fact, we'll maybe make a little skull pile. It's like those are the <laughs> miners that died or something. Okay, I like that. Uh, any any other ideas though? Let's see. Yes, Adam Sandler in the Gas Chamber of Secrets. Um, I like your name. Yes, there's a search bar added. However, they named they added like IDs, which are kind of annoying. So it's kind of a trade-off, but I do love the search bar. Hi, Zivkos. I have a hidden boss. They'd be able to move at least no attack, probably. Oh, yeah, Siege Engines, minecarts, yeah. Yeah, sure, we could have, like, a catapult in there or something. Or we could have, here, we'll have, a, yeah, like, an actual Siege Engine. I see what you mean. Yeah, and it could be, like, they were using it to, like, blast through the mine. Okay, I get it. Good idea. Uh, let's do... Hmm... I'm trying to think outside the box for like one more encounter. Let's have some orcs in here. Like, you know, like a. It's like an orc party that's living down here or something. And they have like a shaman and. Maybe a Kodo beast that. I don't know, whatever. And. Maybe they could have like a healing ward. That could be an interesting aspect of the battle. And the spirit wolf. 
that the shaman has as pet or something. Cool. Is that is that the underground area? This is an interesting one. I like I like some of the ideas that uh, we came up with, and that's going to be a really fun boss. Okay, moving on to the desert. This one's organized really weird. Well, I guess it's not that bad. Oh, we need to come up with a gate for this. Uh, you know what would be kind of a fun gateway for the desert is like just a straight up trench. And a bridge like appeared over it when you were done or something. Ah, no, 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 no. There we go. So, like, you know, there's this trench with fiery craters down in it and stuff. And you can't really get past until a bridge is, like, reconstructed or something. So... Hmm, that's kind of boring though, just like a natural bridge? We could do a force bridge, that's kind of weird for the desert, but it could be pretty cool. Or an elevator. Uh, I'd still need to kind of study elevators before we use those. I could like make one when we do the triggers though. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a force bridge, why not? Wait. Uh, what? I can't even see it. It's not horizontal. What? That's weird. They're both vertical. Okay, we're not using those. You know what? Oh boy, what am I... What am I redoing here? Oh, ah, uh, no. There we go, that's what I meant to do. Okay, so we'll just have this natural bridge. It's flush with the cliff, and then we change the life to zero. There we go. So now you have to defeat all of the enemies in the desert, and then once you go here, it rises up. Maybe we could even have... Like when we do triggers, I want to show you how to do like cutscenes and stuff. And I think what would be cool in this one is if like maybe a spirit appeared or something and like did a cool special effect and then the bridge rose up. That would be cool. Okay. Giant scorpions in the desert. Great idea. It's a great way to start. Are those naturally in the barrens? They should be if they're not. They're not? Why not? That's weird. Okay, first of all, let's do like a... I need to see my pathing. Okay, so it loops around there. Um, let's do... Let's do a... Let's do a centaur tribe here. With like a... With like an actual con as their leader. And then we could have some of their centaur tents over here. Whatever. And then where are those scorpions? Sunken ruins, maybe? Okay, I'm just gonna have to find those. I know they're called arachnophids on this. There we go. It's kind of funny. Um, there's some interesting changes that they made before WoW, like arachnithids were later called scorpids but they also had like those macruras the lobster people uh those used to be called like lobstrox or something like that which is pretty funny what map are these on well let's see a tent is on all of them Oh, tile set, that's what I'm looking for. Dang it, I lost it. Okay. <clears throat> it's 
Somebody help me out. Does anybody know where the arachnithids are? Oh, ice scorpions? Pfft, that's lame. Seriously? I wonder if they just, like, ended up wanting to put scorpions in the game, but the only com campaign they had was the Frozen Throne, so they're like, eh, we'll just put them in here, why not? That's weird. Okay, well, we will repurpose them for the Barons then. Um, hmm. Let's have them guarding the path to the Oasis. That could be kind of cool. So let's have just a couple of those. Whoa, Overlord Arachnid. That's pretty sweet. Actually, you guys thinking what I'm thinking? What if we had a giant scorpion as the end boss instead of like throughout the desert? That could be a sweet desert boss. So let's just have like little, little ones here and there. That sort of thing. Foreshadowing and whatnot, but then the, the end boss is a huge arachnid. That would be sweet. So let's make our own Overlord Arachnithid boss. Oh, we will call him. Any thoughts for a giant scorpion name? Um, yes, Revenant Rants. It, 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 they have burrowing abilities, so we can make that really cool like it pops out and attacks you and when it gets wounded it runs over and burrows and then pops out somewhere else or something. That could be a really fun battle and it'd be fun to program as well with triggers. Any ideas for a scorpion? How about uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sand Sting. That's a stupid name. Uh, uh, I'm usually good at coming up with random names on the spot, but any ideas? Yeah, the the color codes. I'm gonna play around with that when we get to abilities, but sand sting's fine for now. Whatever. And we will make him a giant. Except I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna fix his. Come on. Where do you change what tile set it's in? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. It is that. Um. Whatever. He's here. In this windy area. Whoa. He looks amazing. Maybe we could even put like some treasure here, and when you go close to it, the treasure disappears like a mirage, and he pops out and attacks. That could be sweet. Um, any other ideas for desert encounters? We could do some dragons. We haven't done any dragons yet. Do some like bronze dragons. Bronze dragons are some of my favorite. We'll make like one giant bronze dragon guarding the oasis and stuff. Thunder lizards are good. Uh, what is this area? It's kind of weirdly set up. This will do for now. Um, okay, I think that's all the areas, right? Maybe some harpies around the dragon as well. Oh, the oasis also should be a fountain of health. <laughs> that actually looks kind of cool. It's like the water itself has fairies instead of a fountain. But yeah, cool. <coughs> All right. Um, 
so that's good for there. Let's just kind of sprinkle a few in here, and then we'll finish up before 8.30 so we can have an hour to mess around with some abilities and stuff. Actually, you know what? That's enough. I, I want to have more time to look at those. Okay, so we got the bosses set up. Logically, we could also have a boss here and stuff, but... I can work on that later. I want to get to some abilities. Okay. So, let's give... Let's work on our hero, Dante, for a little bit. Let's give some hero abilities. So making your own abilities are really fun. What I'm going to do is, let's just add some some normal abilities, but reskin them a little bit. That's what I want to do with him. So, first off, uh, what I think is fun is... Uh, when like every um, unit has a chance to do a critical strike or dodge. And I don't think I'm gonna do that here, but I think he should just have that as a passive that's not a hero ability. Um, and so it just happens like as a passive ability. Sweet. It also comes with evade. So. Chance to critical strike. Let's do let's do like a five percent chance to crit, just like in D and D. One out of twenty chance. So it doesn't happen as often as like a blade master, but when it happens, it's like sweet, I critted. Uh, and we'll do like a damage bonus as a as well as a multi multiplier. So like he does, you know, twelve extra damage or something. And come to think of it, this sh probably shouldn't be called critical strike because it's also dodging. So we'll call it heart of the warrior. So he has a, we'll say like an 8% chance to evade or something. Oops. Uh, oh, that's weird. What was this before? 20? That's weird. I think this is a decimal and that's like a, yeah. So, okay, fine. 10% uh, chance to evade. All right. And this here is the button position. And what I want is, so I think that the button position is, um, you know what, um, let's just take like a five minute break. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Let's just take a break for a second. You can like, you guys can go to the bathroom or whatever. Um, I need to, yeah, I'll be right back. You guys can, I'll see you in a sec.
Okay, guys, I'm back. Ready to get back into it. So, um, abilities. So, with these button positions and whatnot, it's just like simple X, Y coordinates and stuff. Uh, what we want is the uh, is the position for a passive ability. I think should go up in the middle, kind of away from the other ones. Uh, kind of where I think Shadow Meld is. Okay, come on. I know that there's a Shadow Meld ability. Where is it? Oh, it's two words. Okay. So yeah, this is Y position one and X position two. So if we change this to two one, it should be where we want it to be, and it'll just be kind of out of the way for our other abilities. Okay. Great, so this will say that it gives a certain, it'll look at this and say it'll give a 5% chance to do 12 or twice as much damage on attack and etc. You can change the tooltips and stuff and for other ones we might want to. Um, man, it's still just super like bright in these things, aren't they? lighting to look right whatever your guys aren't looking at me anyway probably okay so Dante will have that ability our sword master so we put that in the normal abilities heart of the warrior sweet uh, so now what do you guys see our sword master having like what abilities should he get as a hero and you should think outside the box because like for example you can change the model of anything like you could do storm bolt and change it to something else like a fireball or or a bomb or anything like that and so i'm trying to think what do you guys think would be good for a uh sword master any ideas i'm trying to think what would be fun to use against bosses what if The alchemist has an ability called acid bomb. Let's call it like flame slash. We'll change the icon to um, Mithril swords. So that'll be the attack icon. Searing blade. You know what? Searing blade sounds better. <laughs> Let's make it make its hotkey Z. So much easier when um, oh dang! Uh, what's the usual? What's this color? I wonder. Is there a way to tell? Okay, it's ironic, but I'm not going to be using this apply color right now, just because I want this to. Actually, you know what? Sure, I'll use it. Um, let's just pick a color. So the hotkey itself can just be in like, I don't know, teal. Sure, why not? So you apply the color. Okay, that didn't work. Why is it black? Oh, because I clicked that. Okay, I see how it works now. So instead you just click like that. Okay, cool, I like that. All right, okay, so Searing Blade is our Z ability. Um, so in this case, I think it would be X position one or zero, even actually. What are what are what are the uh, what are an alchemist's abilities? I should know this. I'm like a coder. Like I should know like X and Y co coordinates. But okay, healing spray, chemical rage, acid bomb. So. So it goes zero, one, two. So we want it to be the first ability, so we do zero. Okay. So this is the text, this is the tooltip when you're just attacking with it. Fairy fire with a bleed effect? That's a great idea, Batata. 
That could be really fun. Actually, hmm. Because th this ability deal decreases armor already, so... And there's not really any good bleeding effects, so that's a really good idea. But I don't think it'll work for this one. But I forgot about Fairy Fire. That could be a good, like, Sunder Armor ability for rogues or something, so... Anyway, so this is the tooltip when you're mousing over it to cast. This is when you're learning it. And so... I'm not going to worry about hotkeys for... Uh, for learning. I'm not going to be that type of player. So let's just do learn searing blade level whatever. And the tooltip will be I'm just going to change this first part. Uh Oh, dang, it, this is area of effect, huh? Well, we can change that. <sighs> Slashes with a powerful fiery strike. Igniting hostile units and then decreases armor, deals high damage over time, period. Because we're going to take away the last. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So we'll just keep it the exact same, but we're going to change the buff. So what a buff is, is like an effect that's ongoing. So it's like, if you're slow, then you have that little yellow effect on you, and that's the slow buff. So we're going to make our own for this. This unit has been hit by a searing blade, has reduced armor and is being damaged by time. Uh, and then the icon will be the same as searing blade. And then we want to make sure that it looks like they're on fire when they're burning. So we could do... Um, where is Ignite? That's weird. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I kind of like just the idea of like... Is there like a human... Uh, maybe it is a buff. Like building damage. So they could just look like that while they're burning. That's pretty cool. Let's maybe just do medium. Yeah, so their chest is burning. Cool. So we'll just change the buff to be that. Searing blade. And then you can change it for each level. And we might want to do this later, but you can make heroes actually have more levels. Actually, that's let me show you how to do that. So in advance, there's gameplay constants. And you can change actual aspects of the game. Like, for example, um, how interesting. Like, if you cancel construction, how much hit points it lasts. It takes, rather, a uh, collision combat. Oh, yeah, so, so you can make your own types of damage. Like, instead of Chaos, Ethereal, Hero, Pierce, whatever, you can change them, and you can uh, change what they do. Like, you can make, you know, your own... You can make a fire-type damage, and it does more damage to Fortified, but less to, I don't know, whatever. So you can change all sorts of different things here. You can make bones decay faster, uh, a higher food limit, that sort of thing. What we're going to do is... change heroes so they can have more levels. So hero XP. Oh, interesting. Building kills don't grant XP, but you can turn that on if you want to. Um, how much does it multiply? Uh, how much they cost to revive based on their level? That sort of thing. Uh, max level heroes drain XP? Huh, that's weird. What does that mean? Hm, I don't know. Anyway, Level factor. Where's level limit? Dang, I can't search. Uh, maybe I won't do this today. 
Okay, well, I can look this up later. Is it like right in front of my eyes? Where is it? It should have like 10. Oh, here it is, maximum level 10. So let's make Dante able to get to level 20. So you change that, and then all of a sudden, he can go up to level 20. So if that's the case, we could make each of his abilities have more uh, levels. Okay, like you can have like five levels for the basic abilities. And then you can just make them kind of scale. Actually, I think there's a way to auto scale. Auto fill levels, look at that. Whoops, nope, I did that completely wrong. Um, ah, okay, you know what, never mind, I'll just do this manually. So it takes away five armor at, at third level, but then it takes away like six armor. We could even have like, if you go up to all the way to level five, have it like be even better, like eight or something. But maybe you only have a certain number of hero points or something, so you want to decide like, you know, if you want to spend it in this ability or this ability, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to change it so that it's not a missile at all. It's just a quick attack. Uh, no missile itself. But we could do like a, a burning effect or something. Is there like a fire effect that would be good? I'll just do that for now. Um, what is he doing? Look at that weird birth animation. Okay, zero two. That's what I thought. Okay, we're good. Um. Can you modify day and night time? Yes, you can. Uh, you could make night last 10 seconds and then the rest, or, or you could make there be more hours in the day and stuff like that. I recommend that you guys just kind of play around with gameplay constants and see what there is, because it's, it's really cool. Um, okay, so, ooh, that's cool. You can make it, the interval is like how often it damages them, so you can make it damage them more quickly or something. Where's like the range of the attack? Okay, area of effect. Um, just gonna change it to that because I don't want it to be like an exploding thing. I just want it to be attacking one enemy. Uh, cast range. What is his normal attack range? And that's what it'll be. His normal attack range is a hundred. That makes sense. So his cast range, let's make it a little bit more, 110. And then the cooldown. Okay, so this is one thing I don't like about Warcraft 3. Casters don't, they have a limit on how good they can be because of their intelligence. Like if you have a Lich who's level 10 and he has like full mantles of intelligence in his inventory, it's not that great. But if you have like a Demon Hunter with max Spider-Man socks or whatever those agility items are. He attacks super fast and he has good armor and all that. And then a strength hero has tons of hit points and stuff. But a caster, it's like, oh, they have a billion mana. Oh well, because they can't use, like they can't, the cooldowns are still the same. So what I really think should happen is that abilities should have shorter cooldowns the long the higher the level because then you could spam them more often and like like imagine how cool it would be if you had a lich and you were able to just cast frost nova like constantly like that would be amazing like you'd run out of mana faster and that's why intelligence would be better so since this isn't an area of effect attack i think it would be balanced to turn down the cooldown to 10 initially and then like eight and then six and four and then like one at level five so you could just like attack like crazy at this time but the mana cost will go up see i think that's way more uh i think that's that makes way more sense secondary damage 5 10 15 
20, 25. What about more intelligence, more spell damage? That would be the logical thing, but I don't think spell damage is calculated with any modifiers. Like attack damage is, you know, it has like attack plus whatever from your uh, items and stuff, but I don't think spell damage is affected by anything, which is another dumb thing. Um, it's just a set amount in here, like see right here, it's, uh, it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 damage depending on the level, and that's it. It's not affected by your intelligence and stuff. So logically that would definitely be a factor, but since it's not, I think the best thing is to have it be uh, like just a faster cooldown, just to do it more often. Let's turn down the, let's change the mana to like 60, I guess, and then 75, and then, uh, should we go up 15 every time? No, no, let's go up 10 each time. 70, 80, 90, 100. And then we'll, these are the targets allowed by the spell. Since it's, since we're changing it from a projectile to just a melee attack, I'll take out air. Oh, thank you, autosave. Uh, and then this is, again, the tooltip of what it'll look like. So... Blade. Oops. Uh, oh, that's dumb. Why does it have to put in the lo level manually? I feel like it should only have to do this once. One cool thing about having there be different tool tips for every level is like on one level I made on one able map. I made it so that instead of saying like level 5 or whatever on a spell, I had like basic Searing Blade, advanced Searing Blade, expert, master, and grandmaster or something. So that was kind of fun. Uh, okay. This probably isn't that important. So let's just kind of... I'll just copy what it says up here. Increasing marrow armor while dealing damage over time. Okay, so that is how you create an ability. Um, oh, what we also need to do is change the animation names. So the animation names, like, depending on what the spell is, some units might have different ability, like, animation names. The Torin, for example, when he does War Stomp, he stomps the ground. But when he does Shockwave, I think he just swings his axe and stuff. So you want to make sure that those are right. So in our case, we want to just make it his attack animation. It'd be cool if we could just do that one, but it's a little bit hard to do a specific one. We could try it, though. Attack three. Let's try it. I think. Let's see. Attack three. And I believe that these are in order of preference. Like, if it can't find the top one, it will. Uh... <laughs> I like that idea, Mr. Legendary One. Hide little Timmies on the map. Maybe not little Timmies, because. <clears throat> There are already children in the village, but it would be really funny to have like a achievement where it's like these little items or something. Hmm. I'll think about it. That's a good idea. Maybe they could be like mechanical goblins or something, and you bring them to a goblin alchemist and he or a goblin tinker and he rewards you or something. That could be pretty funny. Uh, there is one thing I'm gonna try, and that's a caster. So. You can also add a special effect on the caster when he casts it. And so here's what I'm going to try. Phoenixes have this like cool fire animation thing that's like leaves a trail behind it. So I'm going to try doing caster art phoenix and attach it to Dante's weapon so that when he attacks it goes like. Let's see if it 
works. It may not, but we'll give it a try. All right, that's it. You can add an effect sound to it if you want. This will probably already make a sound effect from like the Phoenix Fire and the stuff like that. Uh, oh, level skip requirement. That could be useful. Here are levels which must be gained for each successive ability level. Yeah, we'll do one. That's normally just, uh, I can't remember what that's used for anymore, but uh, that just makes it so you can't put all the abilities. You know what, never mind. No, let's let's make it so you can put all your your uh, points in that. But if you, you know, if you put it all in that, you might, it might be too expensive for you. So that could be, that could be a good trade-off. Change these just to human race so they can all be together. Easy to find. Okay, cool. So that is our first ability for Dante. Searing blade. Cool. Um. All right. Let's let's fire up our map for the very first time, shall we? We haven't done this before, so something weird might happen if we do. But let's let's give it a try. Oh, cool. He's. I, I just noticed that he has a few animations, so he has this ability, which could be cool. We'll have to think of something that'll fit with that. Maybe some kind of blast wave or something. Anyway, okay, so let's just, let's fire this up. Um, okay, here's one thing to do if you're doing a non-melee map. Delete all of this stuff, because this is what sets it up to be like a melee map with, you know, with just the classic ability and stuff. I always leave that so it's not midnight, but that's the only thing. All right, let's try this out. It's exciting. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Let me face the terror. <laughs> for my people. I already like Dante. As you wish. For honor. For my people. Okay. So here's Heart of the Warrior. Uh, it was actually one off. I meant to have it here, but that's okay. That's not too bad. Oh, and it helps you dodge, but that's okay as well. Okay, here's Searing Blade. Okay, so... I can't remember... Okay, that's a problem. The hotkey isn't working, but that's okay. Okay, I can't use it on destructibles. I might be able to change that, but... Okay, I like that so far. Okay, let's... Um, <laughs> I guess we could use it against these people. Let's see how it looks. Hey, that's pretty cool. That looked nice, except... Um, <laughs> Lady, you're on fire. Look at that, though. Lowered her armor, and she's basically burning to death. <laughs> I am not afraid. Wow. It'd be... It, this is going way too far, obviously, but it'd also be fun to put, like, law enforcement, like, if you attack in town, then guards attack you or something, but not gonna happen. Anyway, okay, so that kind of worked, except he attacked with the wrong weapon, I think, huh? What would you ask of me? Okay, well, we know it works, obviously, for now. It shall be done. Does he always do that animation? Okay, I wish he would do that animation every time, because that was sweet. He just, like, slashed them and stuff, so that was cool. Okay, cool. Well, it works mechanically. Um, oh, gosh, you can't see it? Dang it. Okay, let me see if I can fix something then. Dang it. I hate when this does this. And I don't know how to fix it, which is the worst part. Um fix this before. <sighs> sorry, I didn't even see you guys' chats. Able or blind? I'm sorry. Um, did it go black as soon as I opened, like as soon as I tested it or something?
This is so stupid. I don't know. I, c I can't even. You can't even see the map editor anymore. It's just completely black. How stupid. Well, this could ruin our party early if I can't get this to work. Um, how did I get this to work in the past? something with changing the uh, program that I was looking at messed it up but I mean I when I did a members stream a few weeks ago I um, I tested out a bunch of able maps and worked fine so useless Makes me so mad. <sighs> yeah, it's still not working, is it? Well, guys, I... It's not even showing the map editor anymore, so... I may have to cut this stream short. I don't want to just be sitting here blabbing for like... Oh, how the heck did I fix it? <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to test it again and see if it breaks. <laughs> Something with me changing it to the... Uh, waiting screen seemed to have fixed it. How's that? Is that working? Okay, it's working. Thank goodness. Oh, is it just showing my forehead mainly? Yeah, you're right. Okay, so um, let me show you. The, okay, cool. It's working now. All right. Well, maybe that's how to fix it. Is just turn it to take a break mode for a second. Okay, so let me show you guys what missed. I'll put like a timestamp in the bottom for whoever so that I don't have to sit through that again. So if you have Searing Blade and you use it on an enemy, just kind of like thrusts fire on that. I don't really like that. I can fix that. But yeah, see, he's burning. His armor is his lower. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool attack. So mechanically, that's exactly the same as Acid Bomb, but we just reskinned it into Searing Blade, which is pretty cool. It shall be done. So, that is the essence of making an ability. Um, so let's just fix a couple of things real quick. Uh, Heart of the Warrior. Let's go back one on that, so it's 1-1. One, one. And then... Searing Blade. Oh, okay, here it is. Okay, now the hotkey is Z. Uh, okay, it's unfortunate that he has, like, it's cool that he has two weapons, but it's unfortunate because he might not attack with the right one. Let me try doing this. I don't know if that's gonna work, but I like that attack best when, like his third attack animation. Yeah, when he just slashes like that. Um, and then for the caster, let's change it to the Phoenix Fire buff, because that's a little bit different. It's not as, no, that's not it. It's missiles, that's what it is. 
Nope, that's not it. What is it? There it is. So we'll add that to his blade this time instead. Okay. Um, you know, modern games speed up a little bit. Let's let's change the damage interval to a little bit faster. That way it'll burn twice as fast, but the duration we could make it shorter. I think it's funny on this game that like abilities can last like like divine shield can last like I don't know like 30 seconds and that's so long if you think about it when you're playing a game like and here's the storm it's like become invulnerable for 2.5 seconds and it's like really good so it's kind of funny all right let's try it again let's see if it breaks it again <laughs> I hope not Searing blade. Let's see how the, this looks any better. Let's try it on her. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> he didn't even have an animation at all. So that didn't fix it. We'll just do. This kind of stuff can take forever, and so, you know, I'm not going to spend forever on it. But, uh, yeah, so we have Searing Blade. Um, okay, so what else should our Swordmaster, uh, what other abilities should he have? Just yell them out. What do you think? I am unable to see. <laughs> Good one. Any any ideas for Swordmaster? I'm trying to, let, let's, I guess we can just look through the abilities while thinking avatar could be pretty fun there isn't a alternate skin for him although that would be sweet if there was uh it'd be kind of interesting to have some utility spells like banish we already have a passive spell so i don't want to do something like bash necessarily um If I was really, if I had a lot of time and I had more skill, I would make like a jump ability because when you cast Storm, Earth, and Fire, the the Pender and Brewmaster like flips into like three different flipping Torrin that land and turn into the Storm, Earth, and Fire. So we could use the Fire one to have him like flip up onto like a cliff or something, but that's like advanced stuff. Um. Chemical Fury with Phoenix Fire effect staying active. Maybe, although I don't want to make him completely a... Um, I don't want to completely turn him into a... a you know, a, a Goblin Alchemist. Let's see if that makes me stop looking so pale. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Divine Shield could be... Yeah, that's, that's so boring, though. Um, entangling roots could be interesting. Maybe just like a stun ability. I think it'd be cool to have two active abilities, you know, like two um, just straight up like targeted ones, you know. Uh, hex, no. Some kind of a healing ability could be interesting. Life drain? Doesn't really fit a sword master though, does it? We could do a summoning ability. That could be fun. Hmm. I'm trying to think what would be best like for you for the sake of you guys like to learn more stuff it, somebody mentioned starfall let's do starfall as an ability but i, I kind of like the idea of keeping him kind of um 
fire themed, even though he's just like a swordsman. Like it's, I don't know. It seems to like, it seems like it's kind of a fun idea. So let's do, uh, let's do Starfall, but have it be called like Meteor Shower. And I'll make it human. And for this one, it's ultimate, but we'll let it have like three levels. Oh, that's that's the same from costs. Okay, cool. Yeah, and you can do required level for abilities as well, which is kind of cool. So you could, I guess, you could force the hero to choose the abilities in order, but I don't want to do that. Okay, so this is going to be the ultimate ability, so it's going to be V. So we'll change the uh, hotkey. Actually, you know, I like the name Meteor Storm better. Alright, calls down waves of falling meteors that damage enemy units. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The buff for Starfall. Uh, oh, that's just the animation. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we make a new buff for that. This isn't one that's going to be seen, so we don't have to worry about it too much, but... Meteor Storm target and okay, so this is what's going to be falling on everyone. So that's a star, and not, we can change it to Rain of Fire. There we go. That'll be pretty cool. So now it's going to be Starfall, but it's just going to be like raining fire on everybody. So we can change Meteor Storm to that. And the priestess of the uh, moon, when she does this, it creates that like moon shaft above her of moonlight. And that's going to be caster animation, I believe. No? Huh. Maybe it's effect. I'm still not entirely sure what the difference between buffs and effects are. But I will check so we can make sure to do it right. Okay, yeah, that's the, that's what appears above her when she casts it. So for that one, let's make it like the flame strike thing. That would be really cool. Nope, not that. Yeah, that. <laughs> and that'll be cool. Yeah, I thought it was Art Caster, but apparently not. I think I think Art Caster happens just momentarily. But this is like she's channeling it. Like as long as she's focusing on it, it casts, and so maybe that's why it's different. The interesting thing is, like, if you notice, like, each of these levels is, like, they let you do different things on each level, and I'm copying them, but, I mean, you could make it so that, like, the first level was Blizzard, you know, and, like, Ice came down, and then the second one was Starfall, and the third one was Fire. Like, it, you guys should really play around with this if you haven't yet, because it's really pretty neat, like, how you can think outside the box and make these really cool ability progression so that you can like upgrade it and stuff although you can't uh, the, the icon's going to be the same so that would be weird if it changed from like you know blizzard to whatever but and we'll do v as the hotkey for that calls down waves of falling meteors that damage enemy units blah blah, blah. don't have to change too much there okay so the mana cost increases. I don't really care about the level progression. You guys get the idea. Let's just kind of see if it works the way I want it to. Um, for the icon, I want to do this. That would be sweet, burning oil. And then he's probably going to use... 
probably going to use this ability, which is fine with me. Okay, let's make him level. Let's make him level ten. Uh, I'm just going to start out. Okay, I'm not going to get into triggers too much, but I'm just going to start one because I want to just have this all good to go. Let's. So at the very beginning of the game, pick every destructible on the entire map and make them invulnerable so that you can't like flame strike them down or something and also uh, open gates open picked destructible okay I'll get into that later but basically I just want all the gates and trees to be and invulnerable and all the gates to be open for the sake of testing okay so let's go ahead and try this meteor shower ability and see how good it looks it should look pretty cool though is it working yes so glad oh no <laughs> Oh no. When it when it looked to open the Oh gosh. You guys, the city's collapsing. <laughs> okay, so apparently the open destructible animation is synonymous with um, destroy. So yeah. Every destructible in the entire map has been destroyed, which is pretty hilarious. Okay. Maybe we could have an ability. I'm just like trying to think of what like good utility abilities could be. Also, I think we can make more than we can make five hero abilities, which could be cool. Anyway, the uh, what I think would be fun is um, make like a dashing ability, like move quickly or something. Oh, I don't want to go there. Well, sure, I'll go here. Ah, forgot to give it to him. Okay, well, let's test Siren Blade real quick. Just with that new Phoenix ability. This happens a lot when testing. You end up like just getting all the way in and then. Yeah, that still doesn't. Oh, look, that was pretty cool. Did he shoot like a fireball when he critted? Okay, as much as I like your voice, Dante, you talk too much. There we go. Come on, crit again. Let's do a cool animation. Crit, come on. I think it said it's 1 in 20 now, but... Ah, heck, let's max it out. Okay, I'm gonna die now. See how fun it is to, oh look, see, no, de <laughs> no death animation, he just disappears. That was fun. Okay, um, so yeah, some interesting stuff going on there. Um, okay, so let's try that again. Yeah, forgot to give him Meteor Storm. Yeah, I think like two targeting abilities and then an ultimate, which is Meteor Storm, could be fun. And then like a maybe a dash ability or a defensive ability, uh, maybe a summoning ability. I don't know. I'll just go through a few more. Um, okay, Meteor Storm. And let's try this so it doesn't do this. Um, I'm going to try something else. So instead, we're going to pick every destructible... Just pick all the gates, can you? All right. Well, I'm not. I'm not. It's not that big of a deal to open these ones. So open that gate. Open that gate. I'm really 
excited to talk to you about triggers because they're kind of my forte. Like, abilities are really fun to make too. But I feel like a lot of people don't know how to do triggers, so I'm excited for next time to show you the basics and just kind of show you that it's not as hard as it seems. Also, I have a coding job today partly because of Warcraft 3. I got started in uh, StarCraft 1, but um, what am I eating? Pretzels. They're my favorite. My blog is called Pretzel Lectern because I love pretzels so much. Um, anyway, I learned a lot of logic and stuff like that from just making Warcraft 3 maps, and that's what kind of led me to my coding career today. Okay, let's try this again. Um, let's do, I'm just gonna do a quick, I'm just gonna give him a blink for now, just cause that's, I'll just make it easier for him to travel. Didn't I used to be an author? I am a self-published author. I wrote like one book with like, I co-wrote a book with my cousin. It's on Amazon if you want to buy it, but it's it's also free on my blog if you just want the PDF. It's not that great. It's It was fun to make. I mostly just wanted to finish the project. Like it was, you know, it was a book we wrote together and it took years for us to finish editing it and getting all the plot holes out. And I still find mistakes in it today, but it's, um. It's it's a book. I'm technically an author. Oh, there go all the trees again. Unbelievable. Oh well. Alright. Wow. Okay. Um I don't know why all the hotkeys aren't in Warcraft they aren't just ZXCV already. It's so annoying to have to have memorize them all. Uh okay, let's go to the cave. Could even make like a fire blink or something that could be fun actually blink kind of screws things up i mean if you've seen my video on uh what's it called oh no never mind i'm out of here you're immune to magic uh terror of the tides like my ev could just go all over the place which is why, why they put all kinds of like secrets and stuff but that could be problematic on this, where we want to like limit Dante and where he can go. So we'll see. Okay, let's get our. All right, let's finish these guys off. Here we go. Okay, let's try it out. Here we go. Ready? Whoa. Not bad. That's pretty cool. And uh, we might be able to change the interval. I love that flame strike effect. That's really cool to have him just like have all that spiraling going around. Man, this guy's tough. Ooh, that was cool to see that little ray from my. He's gonna res, but let's go fight Sand Sting just for the fun of it, since we can blink over this gorge here. Let's just let him kill us instead. Whoa, he looks sweet. We would have to make his pathing bigger because he's oh wow, he's so weak. Yeah, we we're definitely gonna need to like make his hit points bigger and yeah, he was way too easy. Anyway, that's a good start. Okay, um, is there anything you guys want me to cover? Because I've, you know, like I can kind of just fill in a few of these things over the next week in preparation for triggers and like actually making maps. But like, what do you guys want? Like, is there something you want me to look at? Or uh, is there a type of ability you want me to experiment with? Because I don't know how much of this is useful to you of me just like kind of tinkering around with stuff like 
it's like you know obviously you can fine tune stuff and make it as as uh you know, as polished as you want and stuff, but I don't know how fun that is to watch. So, I mean, if, if there's something, like, I want these to be useful to you guys. So if you guys, if there's something that you want me to cover, how do you make Reign of Fire non-channeling? I'm not sure if you can make it non-channeling. You could make it, like, you mean, like, you just cast it, and then it starts falling, and you walk away, and it still keeps falling? Or... Summoning orbs of fire that self-destruct. The thing with summoning is you basically just summon units. And so, like, we could make... You know what? That actually sounds kind of fun. Let's, let's, make, let's make that summoning one. Uh, is there a damage interval in this, though? I wanted to change that real quick. Oh, yeah, here it is. Damage interval. So we could do, like, 0.5 but have like a much smaller area maybe. And that's way too long of a cooldown. And I'm just gonna do one level because this is daunting. Um, 0.50 damage dealt. Maybe a little less because it'll be a lot faster. Um, duration. Hmm. Yeah, I think just like 10 seconds. Like, why why should it be any longer? If, it, if they don't die in 10 seconds, then that's it for you. Okay, so let's do, let's, let's kind of get a little bit more complicated. So, uh, yeah, Batata said, a, s a fun summoning ability where you summon orbs of fire that self-destruct. Lower base attack time equal increase attack speed. Uh, no, well, I don't think it's called attack time. Like, if you look in attack... Oh, this is what I should have gone over. I'm sorry, you guys. I wasn't prepared for this. But um, it's the attack cooldown that shows how fast you attack. Yeah. So if this is lower, then this is how much long your hero waits to make their next attack. You know what? Let's, let's just go through all of these real quick because I want this video to be more useful. <laughs> um, okay, so you got your abilities, obviously. Um, animation is a little complicated, so don't worry about that when you're just kind of starting out. Uh, death time, no, that really makes any difference. Art, game interface, score screen, model file, those are the ones that only really matter. So what is useful, though, is scaling your shadow more or less special is what kind of blood your character has, which is kind of funny. Basically, if they get hit with like a mortar or a catapult shot, they have a special exploding animation. So if you look to, there to the side, there's like abominations have a special animation because they used to have a like actual exploding ability, which is kind of interesting. Um, but all the buildings have their own, you know, explosion animations and stuff. Humans have bright red blood. Orcs have a little bit darker red blood. Bugs have green blood. Undead have purple. Night elves have purple. Oh, I guess that's like a shot from a grave playthrower and a griffin rhino. That's weird. Not sure why a troll witch doctor has different blood, but and yeah, like a murloc has that sort of thing. Anyway, so that's basically what happens when they explode. Um, team color. We looked at that. We looked at tint. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, so when it comes to making your attack, uh, make sure when you're making your character's attack that you, they have at least one enabled, and they can have different attacks. Um, I'm trying to think of a unit that has two different attacks. Um, because some, some, oh, here's an example. Uh, Chimeras. If you look at chimeras, what is going on? Oh, neutral passive. Chimeras have two different attacks. They have lightning and they have acid breath. So if we look at the chimera unit, I'll show you kind of how this works. See, it has attack two. So attack one is 
the acid breath and it is a siege damage because the upgrade acid breath or whatever it's called is uh, corrosive breath that's what it's called it's to improve their damage on against buildings and so they're it, it's basically to do that and so they start out with only attack 2 enabled attack 2 is their lightning breath attack um, so they start out with just lightning breath and then once you upgrade to corrosive breath it unlocks this attack so that they can attack Siege as well. So the way you could use this is you could make it so, like we could do this with Dante actually, which would be fun. We could make him have two attacks, both. Uh, his normal attack is against, you know, ground or whatever. We could also make him have an attack it looks like he already has an attack, which is kind of weird, but anyway. Um, what was it based on? A Blade Master? Yeah, I don't know why Blade Master would have two different attacks. Anyway, we could have a second attack be ranged, and it's against air units. So see, we could just have basically... These are all the different targets that this specific attack can work on. And so we could just have air. So when he attacks anything but air, he just attacks with his swords. But if he attacks an air unit then he shoots like a fireball or something so the way we do that is you have base damage which is how much damage it does at least so we'll say I don't think you have to worry too much about this with heroes because their base damage is based on how much their like agility or prime attribute is and stuff so we worried about that but you also have a number of dice and the sides per die and so this is two dice no this is yeah this is two four-sided dice 2d4 if you speak D D. so basically that could be two to eight damage in addition to whatever his base damage is from here so i think that's fine like we don't want him to be super good against air actually yeah why not change it to the exact same so 212, yeah, and then their attack type. Um, if it's siege, it'll do damage against, like extra damage against uh, buildings, piercing, etc. Um, yeah, and then also armor type. This is the t type of sound it will make when he gets attacked. Uh, I'll show you kind of how this works. So there's all these different sounds that depending on what attacks and what type of armor it hits. So for example, um, Swordmaster's Flesh, he, he's kind of wearing armor, so we'll have him wear some metal armor. So when he gets attacked by, say, a metal heavy slice, like from a demon with a giant blade, it'll sound like this. But if he has uh, flesh armor, it'll sound like this. And if he was made of stone, which like a lot of buildings are, golems, that sort of thing. So that's kind of cool. It can kind of add some personality to a unit. Anyway, so that's how attacks work. You have the dice, you have like the projectile. Um, so projectile arc, you don't want it to be very high. Like if it's too high, then it just goes like whoosh, like that. You don't want that. So I, I usually do like 0.15 or something. Uh, and then the projectile art. Let's just have him do like a, just like a straight up fireball, like that. A lot of units have this missile and stuff, so we'll just kind of do that for now. So when he attacks air units, he uses fireballs. Um, projectile homing, that if it's enabled, then they can't miss. The fireballs just home in on their target. Speed, uh, six or seven hundred is a decent kind of slow thing. When in doubt, like just kind of reverse engineer stuff. I think that's one of my biggest talents is reverse engineering stuff. That's how I learned how to do the editor was I just looked at stuff and how it worked. Like for example, for him, for the Archmage, his projectile speed is 900 and his range is 600. So it sounds good for us, right? Might as well do that. So attack two, 
range. Actually, 500 sounds fine for that. What was it? 900, 600? Okay, I'll do like 800 speed then. Um, great, so we can test that in a second. Um, death type, a lot of these things, like, they could be useful depending on what type of map you're making, but honestly, they're not really, like, you don't have to worry about them if you're just a beginner. Um, movement. Uh, movement height is for flying units. If you just, like, a wisp is just barely hovering over the ground and a chimera is flying super high. Dragons fly higher than drakes and whelps, that sort of thing. Speed base. Unfortunately, there's like a maximum speed, which is only 522, and it's not that fast. I kind of wonder if there's a gameplay constant in there that I could that you could make it higher. But anyway, most most units are about 300. Uh, turn rate is kind of complicated. It's like how much the unit like kind of warps to the side. It's kind of like how flying units sort of bank when they change. Movement type. You can fly, hover, float on water, or swim. Kind of self-explanatory. You can make sound loop. So like you can make it so that... I, I, I'm not sure which um, units have a looping sound, but like if it was like a fire elemental and it could like have a crackling fire sound all the time can make sound when uh, when you're moving. I believe knights have like a galloping sound when they're moving. I don't know what random sound is. Is that just like, that might be just like it randomly plays that sound. There's a unit sound set. There, also, there used to be like a death sound, which was interesting, but for some reason it's not on here anymore. I think that would have been fun to have a different death sound if you wanted to. And then these are all just like, stats for heroes like how how fast they gain agility how fast they gain strength that sort of thing which can be good if you're making your own like um, custom race you can um, change you know things like how much how long it takes for them to build how much food they cost uh, how much gold they cost how much lumber obviously hit points um, we're gonna do that a little bit more next time when we do triggers and like boss battles and stuff I'll you know we'll play around a little bit with the hit point maximum but I mainly want to focus on like fun stuff like you know having to move around and teleporting and cinematics that sort of thing hit point regeneration I think that's per second so 0.25 would be one hit point every four seconds some regenerate at night some regenerate only on blight some during the day that sort of thing Mana amounts, again, heroes, it depends more on their stats like intelligence and stuff. Uh, race, repair cost, I'm not really sure what that's, that's kind of weird. Because I thought repairing is like, it kind of drains resources over time. So I'm not sure exactly what that means. Sight radius, uh, at day and at night. Sleeps, true or false, a golem would be false, an ogre would be true, that sort of thing. Stock is like if it's at a mercenary camp, and it's like how many are available to hire, uh, how long does it take for one of them to come into stock, that sort of thing. Unit classification, some units are giant, some are mechanical. I'm not sure why giant is on here. I think that's a relic from the alpha, because I think mountain giants used to like, not mountain giants, mountain kings used to like do bonus damage against giants or something, so... Summoned units can get like damage from dispel magic, that sort of thing. Workers, it'll show it in the corner if they're idle. These all just kind of depend on that. And then the hotkey for usually training them when it's a unit. Um, and then obviously the name, proper names for heroes, how many there are. And then tooltips are kind of self explanatory, especially since you can see what color they are now. It's just like basically when you click on the button what they do um so that's it for units uh, I wanted to get to items too but we're basically out of time for today um, 
I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll kind of. I think I'm gonna go back to triggers next time, and and so I can cover those and get you guys started if you're if you still don't know how to like get started on triggers and stuff. I'll get I'll get you started with the basics, and then maybe I'll come back to units because <sighs> there's more to them than I expected. <laughs> Um, like I said, doodads, it's mostly just like art and pathing. That's all that really matters. Looping sound might work, especially for like fire and stuff like that. Um, but you can make like, like these things right here, you know, like you can make pretty much really cool stuff with doodads. And I think the map editor is getting better at them as well. They're updating it. Abilities. We looked at those quite extensively. We mainly looked at hero abilities, but you can also like normal abilities are kind of the same except they don't have any like levels, you know. Um, and they just have things like sounds that you can do and I think the best thing to do with abilities is reverse engineer them. Like look at an ability that you like to that you'd like to copy or that you'd like it to be a little bit different and then just tweak it and see what happens. Um, one thing that's interesting is lightning effects. Uh, with aerial shackles, yeah, so there's, like, if you know what aerial shackles is, it's the dragon hawk, and it shoots, like, this chain of energy and shackles something in place. That little chain of energy is a lightning effect. It's the same thing that shoots with, like, chain lightning, drain life, you know, when the dark ranger's, like, sucking green energy. Um, finger of death is another one, like a red lightning sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so you can mess with those as well. It's kind of fun to switch them around, like for example, make, you know, make a healing wave. You could just change it to chain lightning and he's like shocking his friends and they're healing, so stuff like that. But yeah, just play around with them. Uh, there's lots of different icons. I've showed you, you guys should look at my icons videos if you want to find secret icons, because you can change them here and uh, there's some hidden ones, like for example, uh, BTN Lantern, I think. Uh oh, I forgot the, uh, I forgot the suffix. Anyway, that's where you type in the, C the um, custom ones or whatever. Not custom, like hidden, their paths are still there, but. Uh, what else? Button position, we talked about animation, missile art, arcing, that's kind of the same as weapons and combat and stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for abilities. For buffs and effects, don't worry too much about buffs and effects at this point. If you're a beginner, they're not, like, super important. Um, yeah, they're just kind of polishing things. Upgrades are things that I don't really use that much because I feel like they're mostly for like actual melee type maps or like ones where you actually build a base and stuff like that but I want to get into them more because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with upgrades like you can enable new abilities you can change units uh, attack type I think because um, yeah, there's some ability in here. Maybe it's flat cannons? No. But flat cannons is kind of cool, though. Like, it gives them an area effect damage against air units. Uh, masonry increases buildings' armor by a certain amount. And, there, you know, there's different levels and all that stuff. And priest, like the adept and um, master training ones give them new spells and stuff. So, anyway... What I recommend most of all, though, if, if you guys really do want to get into the map editor, just experiment. Look at how everything works and just try it out. Make a whole bunch of stupid maps, and like I have, and eventually you'll get them to, you know, you'll figure things out. You make breakthroughs, that sort of thing. Um, if you guys want to, like, put comments on this video about certain things, I'll try and do my best to answer them. I think that's what. Uh, I think these videos in particular would be best for you guys to ask on. Um, I know people kind of uh, post on my other videos and stuff that they're kind of jumped around, and I, I try to answer those, but 
I'm going to try and focus on these videos and see if I can answer questions and be of service when it comes to tutorials. Anyway, so we made a unit. He's, you know, a hero Pandaren, which is pretty cool. He's got a couple of unique abilities. Um, I think I'll look at those more later. I don't know. I I think I'm being too ambitious with this project. I, I keep wanting it to be this great thing, but there's just simply not enough time to do all of this in a stream. Uh, so anyway, we'll do our best. Um, next time I'll talk about triggers. Um, and then after that, maybe I'll do one more about the units and we can just kind of round out a couple bosses maybe, but I, I definitely want to focus a little bit more on triggers. Uh, but, you know, there's only so much we can do. So anyway, I hope that that was a fun stream for you guys. Um, it was fun for me. I definitely got into the uh, map editor again. It's always fun to... Um, get back in the map editor this is this has been one of the most fun aspects of Warcraft 3 for me ever I I suck at actually playing the game um, I still haven't ever beaten the Frozen Throne campaign maybe I should stream that sometime and see if I can beat it with you guys' encouragement or something no but I'm just I'm mostly a game creator and I just love seeing how things work and stuff and so I mean that's what kickstarted this series in the first place is me just trying to read verse engineer the initial um, campaign maps that were created by Blizzard. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I'm not sure when the next stream will be, uh, but I'll definitely keep you guys posted and I hopefully won't be too far in the future because I'd love to get back into this and look into triggers and stuff. So um, it's not too late to make a little something for that Hive Workshop contest. Uh, I'll definitely be looking at those and streaming, uh, trying out the winning entries and stuff. So that'll be pretty fun as well. Um, they actually named that contest after me, which was quite an honor. <laughs> anyway, so thank you guys a lot. Um, have a good night. Uh, thanks for coming to my stream.